Hey, how's everybody doing? Hey, Patrick. Hey. Patrick. hey. Good. Buddy. John. Cool. All right. See who we got. We got Laura Ritz, Mr. Dan Brown. How you doing, buddy? I'm great. Patrick, yourself? Good, Good. to see you. I can't stay on long, but uh, I wanted to follow through on what we talked about and be available for a while. Yeah, absolutely. I think so. Normally, we start these calls off with some wins. I think you you kind of shared a win with me. I'd love for you to share it with the group. Okay. Let me know when. Yeah, now is good. Okay. So, um, those of you who are familiar, we're, we're longtime JKers. Um, we were in when there were about 350 people in the group, so we've been in quite a while. Um, as you can tell by seeing my face, I'm old and slow. And so, uh, we have been. Um, <laughs> slow to get there, but I, I want to encourage people in uh, how well the system can work. So we've probably got about 40 sites now. Uh, we will be probably about 30, 35 K um, this month. One of the uh, two wins that we had recently on the heat map and lead generator has been huge in helping us accomplish that. We had a, a client who was uh, in a local niche they started with us roundabout way. I'm in BNI. If any of you are familiar with BNI, BNI is wonderful and terrible. It's uh, wonderful that you can make some great connections. It's terrible in that you can end up with some jobs that you don't really want, but you got to kind of follow through because you're in that seat. So I had somebody in my BNI group refer me to um, a claims adjuster who wanted a very simple site. A little site, 1500 bucks. It was hardly worth it. We don't focus a lot on that. But I was sitting in his office showing him the heat map and going over different things, doing a sales pitch with him. As I got up to leave, we closed the deal. I outsourced it to somebody here locally that does that stuff for me. Uh, the people in the office just across the hall said, hey, we heard you talking and we need you. We need full SEO. So went over, talked with them, signed them up uh, for about $1,500 a month, kind of small. But um, after three months, they came back to me and they said, We've been paying Angie's List, Home Advisor, about four grand a month, and uh, we're closing 10% of those leads at best. And the leads that you're generating for us through our website and our GMB, we're closing at 80 to 90%. We want to quit paying Home Advisor and we want to start paying you. So we've, we're adding two locations for them and uh, picking up most of that uh, additional amount a month. So that's win number one. Second win awesome. is the importance of being flexible. Um, Another roundabout way, I was at a networking meeting, somebody was doing Facebook ads uh, or Facebook for a local roofer, he was just getting started, he'd broken off from a larger company. And uh, she said, you know, you ought to, I had a roofing site that was generating leads, I was having a terrible time finding a roofer, she said, you ought to talk with him. So I sat down and talked with him. Uh, he'd actually been working with a former, another JKer, uh, we have a good friend who, who, someone who's become a friend who lives in the area. And uh, they'd had a parting of the ways, sat down with him and, and we talked uh, about doing a multiple location strategy for him. And uh, he really wanted a long-term partner. So three years ago, he wanted to sign a five-year contract with us that made us exclusive digital marketers for him. And in exchange, we got a percentage of everything we did for, I mean, of everything he did, irrespective of whether we generated it or not. So just this past month, so it's been a long slog, we're, we're a little over three years in, we, uh, he sends me a, or his bookkeeper sends me a notice every month, send him an invoice for this much, they calculate all the work that they've done, and based on what our percentage is. So this past uh, a couple of weeks ago, I got the notice from her to send him an invoice for uh, just about $22,000. So it's the biggest uh, we've ever done, but it's been slowly working up from that. And, and it really came because we were willing to be flexible with him up front. And my wife and I went and met with him and his wife at their house. We, we got to know them as people. We believed that he would do a great job and was a trustworthy person. And so a uh, couple of wins, different paths to get there, but um, wanted to share it because I know sometimes, especially any of you who are early in, it can seem like there isn't any light at the end of the tunnel and you just keep banging away and banging away and you got clients that are that stiff you and tell you they're going to do stuff and don't and uh, i think i've heard patrick say it many times finding the right client is really the key to making it work and so we're we have a hybrid we have clients that are uh, flat fee um seo lead gen we have clients that are uh, percentage 
and uh, it's a mix of all of the above and it's working well. So happy to- And that's awesome, congrats. Those are- uh, Month or so. Those are some big ones. Yes. Yeah, so the 22,000, was that for- That was one month. One month. Worth so closed business. it took you a long time to get here, but there's no reason why you can't see more months that are similar to this, right? That, 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 that could happen. Correct, or bigger. Or bigger. Right. He's, he's motivated. He's, he's good. Uh, so a lot of that is residential. He started, uh, he has a background in commercial roofing and now he started to uh, do more commercial and uh, we're doing some work with him on that. So yeah, he's, he, the sky is kind of the limit with him and uh, we're very appreciative and thankful and just, just a great client to have. He loves what we do. You know, sometimes you have those conversations with client and you feel like you're, you're the one who's trying to make sure it doesn't stop. And right. he's a client that's trying to make sure that we don't stop on him. And so it's kind of a mutual, we, we both appreciate what each other brings to the table and uh, it's working very well for both of us. Yeah, it's, it's you know, some of these times it, the, the, lead generator, the lead generation websites or whatever, they can bounce around between different clients and you really, you just have to get lucky once. Right. Yep. You, you just have to like find the right client one time, which if you haven't found them, it can be really frustrating. Right. It, it, but if we know that, you know, there's somebody out there that's running a legitimate business that wants our leads have tremendous value. Right. So it's just kind of finding the right person. Right. So, you know, if you're, if you're, um, you're dating and you you go out with like two or three girls or guys and they're the wrong, wrong people you're not just like well there's nobody out there for me we know there's someone out there right and i think that's a good parallel with this is you just kind of have to have some faith and confidence that this isn't the right person all is not lost there's another person out there who would love to love what you have to provide and would be willing to pay you top dollar for it right so congratulations man that's that's really cool to hear Thanks. and and uh you know, I, I know that uh, setting that that personal record for the highest in a month is, I mean, it's, <laughs> there's nothing like it, right? It's just like, there isn't. Yeah, it's everything we're doing is, is going in the right direction. And, and I just, again, I want to say thank you to you because um, we've got a guy that all he does for us full time is he works on getting our GMBs ranked better. And the tool he uses primarily is the heat mats. He, he runs them every month. He looks where they're at, follows the suggestions that you've made to us about how to get them ranking better. And uh, so your tool and your ongoing help has really helped us get here. It's both in the sales process. The, the heat map is just a, it's kind of a no brainer. It's so visual that people get it immediately. It doesn't take a lot of explanation. Right. In the past, SEO is this nebulous, you know, thing that they, it's hard to explain. So anyway, I just want to thank you because you, you've been a big part. I think we've been with you, I don't know, eight months or so now, six, eight months. And you were in the beta, I believe. We right? were. Uh -huh. yep. I remember jumping on a call with you and um, kind of walking you through and explaining some of the stuff. And I think part of the way through, you're like the light bulb went off. You're like, oh, this is going to be really valuable to us. So it's kind of cool to see you go from this tool being something foreign to like kind of something that helps support your business that you guys have come to rely on to some extent. It's, it's, it's awesome. And it's, it's really rewarding to hear on our end. That's not just me. It's the other people on our team. You know, a lot of them watch yep. this call or participate in this call and, and uh, it's great for them to, to see it and hear it too, because uh, it's, it's, you know, it's easy for me to take the credit. And, and, and trust me, I'm happy to do it. <laughs> there's a lot, there's a lot of other people behind me that are, uh, that are, you know, equally responsible for this. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, that's great, man. Congrats. And that's why I wanted to be on and share because I know that. And also to, you know, I, I think those it's hard. This is a hard time for me to, to uh, be on the call, but every week um, to, tomorrow afternoon, I'll be listening to the whole call and pick up lots of tips and nuggets. And, and what I do is I listen to it. And then I parse out the pieces that are appropriate for whichever of our team member they have application to. So I'll tell, I'll give them a link to the call and say, okay, listen from minute 35 to minute uh, 42, some really gold in here, particular to what you do. 
Right. So rather than all of them having to listen to the whole call, right. not that the whole call isn't wonderful, but. <laughs> no, I get it. Some of the stuff is just, it's just not relevant to them, right? Correct. Correct. Yeah. So what, what are the things that we're going to do? Jeff, Jeff is like the master at like cataloging this stuff. So what we're looking to do is to have him um, go through and he kind of documents the call. So we're going to start putting that information into the description where it's like, at this minute, we do this and, and so on, just to kind of, because some of these calls can go on for a while. And, and, you know, when you're looking back for it, like three weeks in us, a lot of people are like, hey, how do you do this? And it, it's hard for us to know what call that was, right? Yes, that would be really helpful uh, cool. to have that more accessible because there are, there are lots of, you know, fabulous nuggets, uh, but it is, it, it is, you know, challenging to find them and then to remember them once you've found them. So, yeah, absolutely. What's well, it's good to see you, Dan. Thanks for jumping on here, man. Yep. Thank you. Appreciate everybody. Appreciate all the stuff you provide. And uh, yeah, sorry, I can't stay the whole way through, but I've got to. Yeah, no worries, man. And... No, we'll see you tomorrow. Just the other, the other, uh, yeah, yeah, you will. Well, you, you won't, but I, I'll see you tomorrow. The other thing I want to say is, you know, I've still got five or six sites out there that are producing like crazy. And these are really challenging times. Almost every contractor I know uh, is booked two, three months out. And almost the last thing most of them want to talk about right now is more leads. Right. They don't know how to handle what they've got. Um, they can't get the employees. They need to do it. But what we learned a long time ago probably five years ago, we killed five or six sites because we couldn't find anybody. And I just got tired of dealing with the calls and couldn't find anybody. I killed them. I wish right now that I hadn't done that. And so I have this long-term view that even if I can't find somebody for one of these sites right now, I know three months, six months from now, that site's still going to be ranking, still going to be cranking out. Right. And there'll be somebody that I'll find that'll be hungry. Yeah. You know, I, I've had a couple situations like that and, and we still have ones that are this way. One thing that you can do, and it's kind of a little ninja, is you can just send them to a company without even telling them, take the whisper message off or leave it on. And then after a big one comes through, you'd be like, hey, this is Dan. I didn't know if you know, but I'm sending you these leads. You just got this one. Here's the information from it, right? And, yep. and then, I mean, like it will certainly be a pattern interrupt for them. But right. you, you, you guys, we've all, I think, anyone who's built a large number of sites, you're going to have a number of sites that are just not sold. So I think at the beginning of time, you think that these are failed. I think they're, 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 there's no value to them. But as Dan says, like, they're going to come back. They're just, they're, you know, it's just kind of like a rental property that we don't have a tenant in yet, but it's just that yet is an important part. Right. Yeah. So took me a while to really understand that, but that that's sunk in very clear right now. So, right. Yeah. Absolutely. Cool. I, I apologize to anybody for taking up so much time, but uh, really wanted to be uh, share the wins and uh, share the encouragement. Um, anything I can do uh, help as part of the team. Happy to do it. Appreciate you. Absolutely, Thank you. Dan. Cool, man. Yeah, you're you're welcome. Thanks for jumping on. Okay. Thank you, everybody. You guys. Uh, one one thing I wanted to touch on is is this week I, I shared something in there and uh, in the group. And a lot of you guys kind of stepped up and, and made donations and helped out. The, the, the guy whose place caught on fire and burned to the ground, it attempted to burn him to the ground, but he decided that he got out of there, right? So he's on the call, Joshua Murdoch. I just want to say, hey, man, looks like um, I know that you're displaced right now, but, um, you know, it's uh, like, like we spoke on the phone briefly. It's temporary. All you guys that helped out, this is the man that you're helping out right here. So Josh, you just want to say say hi and um, maybe give us like a 90 second rundown of, of what this last week's been like and, and what, what it's going to be like going forward. It's been a whirlwind. Um, so many people have come out of the woodwork and helped me and my, my girlfriend, Abigail, and um, I've received so many donations, clothes, food. Uh, money from people I've never met, people in JK, people in, the, in my neighborhood that I've never met, you know, friends of friends, um, friends of family, you know, it's, it's been amazing and uplifting and I'm just thankful my family's healthy and safe. Um, I just got this computer today. I just set it up and I hopped awesome. on the call. First Zoom call. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so I'm, I'm ready to get back to work. Um, my business is doing about 4,500 a month. Um, 
at least that was my high for last month. It's it's okay. been on a it's been on a steady increase. Um, so I'm looking to get back to work to keep that growing. Yeah, awesome, man. And um, like I said, man, I'm I'm happy. We're, I I want to jump on and do some some coaching with you, and 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 don't let that be inspiration to 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 burn your guys' house down to get free coaching because you know that's not that's not going to be for everyone, right? But. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah yeah man it's it, it's a lot of times especially in this business i think we go on every day and we're thinking that we're kind of on our own and um you know we're working on stuff on our own but you can see when something like this happens the other humans pitch in and they try to help and that's always kind of like in our hearts to try to help people on a daily basis and i think when you have events like this it really can shift your perspective on things. And if you can kind of like, like uh, understand that this like generosity is still out there on our daily basis. So when we go and we're like talking to our clients and we're thinking about like how we can try to help these people, like there are other people on the same side of things and we don't know what they've been through. Like some of these, these people that, um, you know, aren't running their businesses, how we would run it, or maybe they don't get to the phone in time, like just like giving them, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to advise you to stick with someone who's not going to be a good client, but like, just remember we're, we're like people trying to help other people We can give people a break. And, uh, you know, like Dan, Dan was just saying, you know, he was patient and creative with someone. And now it's turned into this like amazing relationship where he's got a check for one month for $22,000, whatever it was. Right. So, um, and also like for you, for those of you guys that are discouraged and you're stuck and you're struggling and you're thinking that's, um, you're in this alone, like you're not, right? It just can feel that way. It can feel like when you lose a client or maybe you try to reach out and get support and it doesn't happen as quickly as you like. Some of this stuff with Facebook and the online world just gets like put onto the back burner and it's not the intention. Um, but, you know, when something happens, I, I think it's good to just kind of like take a pause, look at this, look at the support we have in this group. You guys are not in this alone, right? Like a lot of you guys... I, I want, Josh, I think I only had one, one like quick conversation with you, uh, maybe two years ago. Right. Yeah. Um, I've been in your, I was in your original, uh, lead generated zoom calls. Um, and then we met in Vegas, um, spoke two or three times there, you and your wife I really enjoyed that. And, um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've chatted with you, um, on in the Facebook group, but yeah, yeah but like, so this, this is just my point though, is that, um, there, you, you, there's people that have your back that you don't really realize it. And if you Absolutely. guys will, um, take the action of like looking for the help that you need participating in the group, there's other people that care, right. Yeah. And you may not know them. And, um, you know, just like Joshua said, like he, he didn't like, there's been people reaching out to him that he didn't even know. Um, I actually reached out. I don't know if he's contacted you yet, but my friend, John, he lives not too far from you and um the contractor yeah he owns, yeah yeah I'm, i've been speaking with him okay cool yeah really really good guy so um it's it's i just i don't want to focus on this but i i just wanted to like bring this up as some encouragement because i thought it was like really inspiring to see the way that everyone just like reach their reach their arm out to try to help and um i appreciate all you guys for doing that um, I think it's awesome. Amazing group. I'm really, I just feel really lucky to be a part of it and see that type of support for someone that you guys barely know, just to see them going through some struggling time. So um, Joshua, what we do on these calls each week, and I'd be happy to do this for you. Uh, this week, we've got uh, Puneet, who is going to be our spotlight session, but we kind of just like dive into somebody's business and um, try to locate issues that, that someone, someone's having and then um, come up with a game plan on how we can uh, move things in a better direction. So I want to go over some of the ideas for um, coverage. And then Puneet, we're going to hit you towards the end of the call. So I'm um, looking forward to that. But um, I know that a couple of you guys are looking for the reputation management, uh, the new flow. I've seen that in the group. And um, the, the, the problem that we've had with releasing this, it's, I've got it working in my test. There's just multiple pieces that are connected to it, like texting. So I know that not everybody has a call selling texting account, a call, a call selling account for texting. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to be introducing like the a default where you can just like use one number to do all these different things. 
such as like texting for reputation management. And then if you want to have like individual stuff, you can either go through Zapier or be going um, using Callslink. Um, so that's kind of a dependency along with the context module that we're trying to get in there. So we've got a lot of this stuff. We're just trying to make sure that everything is in alignment. Hopefully we'll have it out here very soon. Um, so it's it's been tested and then um, we've had a number of bugs come up in the last week. So as I mentioned on previous calls, our priority is always fixing, fixing things that is broken before adding in new features. So we've dealt with that a little bit over the last week, but um, I, I don't want to give you a like, hey, it's going to be this exact day because, it, you know, when I do that, I, I, I some of this stuff seems like it's out of our control, I'm like something happens and I just don't want to um, be giving you that. But I'm hoping I'm hoping that we can get it live in the next um, you know week, week, week or two. And I know that's going to make your guys' lives a lot easier. It's going to hit as one big update just because there's so many dependencies between these things. So I've got the, uh, the list of topics um, from the questions here. But before we do that, I kind of feel like we cut it short. Does anyone have any other wins? Let's, get, let's go over more wins. Dan had, Dan had some big ones to share. Is there anybody I'll, else that has some sure mine. wins? Hey, Patrick? I'll, I'll yeah. share mine, Patrick. Uh, we just, and it kind of riffs off of what Dan was saying as far as like getting into these bigger opportunities with clients. Like uh, we had somebody come on cold. It was a referral from another client that we had in a very competitive niche. And he's a, he's a contractor at heart. Like he doesn't know how to, he's not going to be able to scale. He's going to scale to a certain level and then he's, he's not going to have the skill set to do it. And we both saw that we had those conversations early on because we both think that there's so much opportunity in this particular niche and this particular market so we kind of set out a plan that was like what six eight months ago patrick maybe nine months ago now we're talking and about tim. we just doubled him i was in there making lunch and he calls me and says, i want to double i'm ready to roll and so my plan with him was always let's tee this up get it to the level where it's kind of out of your hands and then patrick and i can come in and help manage it or bring somebody else in to help manage it we'll run it up and we'll sell it to a private equity firm or whatever I really, you know, I love taking those big shots, you know, like that's a big goal. And I think that we can get there with this particular niche. We're carving off a little bit at a time every month and just boosting it up little by little. And once we get a more dominant position, I think we'll, we'll have like a real company that has, you know, big numbers behind it that you can take to the market like that. So I'm never sleep on opportunities like that. I and mean, Dan was talking about, you know, pulling in 22K a month because he kind of like has his partnership um, together with with somebody I, the way i look at it is is take, take 10 shots maybe one of them is going to work but that one might make you a, a million dollar paycheck you know like i legit think we can make this company uh worth you know three four five million dollars over the next couple of years and and then we'll just create a joint venture and split it equity wise and, and go so it's a huge huge win to be to see that kind of growth in that competitive niche and this guy actually delivering on his side of the bargain and everything's like all the pieces of the puzzle are falling into place. Pretty amazing. So thank yeah. you. Go get it. Jeff, that, that's been eight months with that client. And I just kind of want to, it's a, it's like Jeff said, it's a really competitive niche. Um, would you describe our organic ranking as, as we're ranking really well or not so well yet? Yeah, it's not really ranking very well organically. So we're both putting skin in the game along the way because I mean, we're, I think we're actually, we're positive. We're cash positive as far as like what we're making versus uh, what we're spending on ads and our, our development team and all of that. Um, it's, it may be break even or close to it or whatever, but it's, but it's worth it because we're building like very, very valuable assets. I mean, he's paying for the development of these assets overall, right? So, right. So uh, yeah, so eight, eight months in and we've been working hard on it and we're still not really ranking that well organically. But Jeff, like, does, is the attitude on our team in that situation, is it more of like just a matter of time or is it kind of like semi-defeated? <laughs> it's always just a matter of time. It's a matter of time. There's right? no defeat in this agency. There, there, there's <laughs> no, there's no like, um, there's no question for us on where this is going and it's eight months, right? It's been eight months that we've been working on this. We're seeing like just small incremental increases over time. And I think that's important for you guys to realize when you guys have the option. Most of you have the option to pick wherever you want to go to. 
which is like referrals sound great because they're easy to close. But what happens is you get thrown into niches that you wouldn't pick. Right. And that's mm-hmm. kind of the double edged sword that that has become our agency where someone's like, hey, um, you know, so so and so is running a million dollar company and they say almost all their leads come from you. I'm really interested. Where do I sign up? What how much do I owe you? Like we we can have the option to say go away we don't want your money <laughs> like we we don't do that right we so we get ourselves and we make sure to set the expectations very clear from the beginning with these people otherwise there's going to be no longevity and you have to do it in a way where when they're paying that they're getting leads right so that's where, where we're running ads yeah. um this guy like i said we changed our business model where we don't really do this ads up front thing anymore like because like jeff said it's been eight months of like essentially break even and there's been months where we've lost but we are biding our time right now right with this guy and now we just doubled down so now it's probably going to move into the area where it's going to be profitable for us right so um well, but it's, it, that, it's that same kind of like um, whatever the adage is or whatever you eat an elephant one bite at a time I mean that's that's the the, the case here I mean definitely you just start where you're at start carving it off just a little by little and I know other right. people are crushing it in this niche and we want to be there and we're figuring it out as we go like I say this is a super competitive uh, market so I, I think overall we're going to have something extremely valuable uh, at the end of the day that's right. And, and this one is in, it's in Phoenix. And I'll tell you, he wanted to focus on like the South, the Southern and Eastern part of Phoenix. So this is very similar to the strategy that we discussed last week and a few other times. So this is what we ended up doing. This is the map of Phoenix, right? So what we did is we broke this in and we built, I think we built five sites. I think that's what we have. So this is like, it's not visible here, but there's Scottsdale. And then we built one for Tempe and Mesa. We built another one. And we also built one in Chandler and Gilbert. I think those are our sites. Is that right, Jeff? Yeah, that's correct. So that's our plan right there. And that's not where it is. Like if that were our, if, if each one of these represented the area that we're ranking, it probably looks more like this right? Because we've got GMBs in all these different locations. And there's actually someone that may be on this call that helped us get some of these GMBs. Not sure if he's here today. Um, but we, we leveraged our social network to help get some people. Um, but it, it kind of looks like this. And our plan is to grow this over time, right? So that's what it looks like now. But as we kind of get more reviews and build our sites, each one of these circles is going to get bigger. And I'll tell you, this is where this is where I'm going to start to feel happy is when these circles kind of start to look like this, where these GMBs are just overlapping. And what's going to happen is it's going to go from like 150 calls a month to a thousand calls a month. And that's where this client's going to be worth $10,000 a month at some point. And it may be a year it maybe two years, but like Jeff said, the, atti- the attitude in our agency is not like if it's, it's like when, when will like, we don't know. We know that it's gotten a lot better over the last, um, I think the lead, leads have doubled maybe in the last like three months, right? Like, like three, four months close to doubled. Yeah. Yeah. So, but they went from not being very many leads to like some leads now. Right. So, but at some point it's going to look like this, like it's, it's just a matter of when So we've gone through the same process enough times and we've struggled the same way in other competitive niches. I know that it happened in, in Raleigh in another niche. We were like, we couldn't really get any results for almost a year. And now we have two thirds of the map in, in almost the entire city. So um, you guys, when you guys are struggling like this, just, and, and maybe you look at, at the agency that Jeff and I are a part of as further down the road. And I want you guys to know that we still go through these same struggles and don't be discouraged when you do anticipate them. If you do a better job with due diligence, then you don't have to deal with these as much, right? We didn't, this was a referral. Otherwise I wouldn't have picked this city in this niche, but um, you know, I'm not really one to kind of like back down from like, well, this is too tough for me. So if a referral is coming in and they're willing to pay us and they're going to pay us what we want, 
and and they're going to be cool and they're going to be someone we like, then then we'll go after it, right? So, um, and I think what, getting a certain number of uh, clients on the board and kind of be, being cash positive in your agency, then you can take some of these shots and like like Patrick's hyper competitive. So if somebody comes to him with this opportunity and he like said he's not going to back down and be like, well, yeah, let's see if we can make it happen, right? Let's, let's see what we can do, especially if the client's going to basically pay for development, even if you're not necessarily crushing it on your cash positive per month it's it's worth a shot because the value long term is so high it's worth it it's right. worth it's worth taking that shot you know yeah absolutely um all right awesome work on that jeff i i yeah. i'll tell you your wins are some of my favorite wins on the call i feel like i get to share those more so <laughs> um all right do we have any other wins anybody else hey patrick Henry, what's up, brother? Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. This isn't really related to Legion, but I think I did touch on it on the past calls, but um, I think one thing everybody could do, if there's a certain niche they want to go after, you can create your own Facebook group around it. So Absolutely, yeah. I started my group on St. Patty's Day. And I'm at over, We're at over 400 members now in the group. And, and this is a group within like a niche? Yep. Very cool. So, so then it's like that's where kind of prospect. Buy What's that? You're using this kind of to prospect. Yep. How are you getting people into the group? So I kind of like, um, so I kind of like friend request people in this in the industry that people are in, and then I just shoot them a message saying like, "Hey, I just wanted to let you know I started a group where you could connect with those in this space. So like, if you would like, you can join here at this link." Yeah. A lot of people it's, said it's yes to that. Pretty easy way to load them in there, huh? Yeah, because like, I guess too, it's like, I'm not like selling them anything. I'm just inviting them into a group. Right, you're leading with value. Yeah, and then that's where the Eugene review strategy ties in too. So then I interview people in the group too and spotlight them. Excellent. Yeah, that's, uh, I, I like I like the strategy, man. Very cool. Yeah. Do you have any I'm, wins, Henry? What's that? Do you have any wins other than building your group to 400? I mean, I had three interviews today for my group too. So excellent. Yeah, I think I'm, what I'm going to do with my group. Well, I'm going to be doing. I'm going to make ways I can. People are going to be doing different stuff with their group too. So it's going to be a different type of lead gen. But I'm going to be connecting them and getting like kind of like connection fees off of that. Yeah. Yeah, man. Excellent. It sounds like things are going in a, in a positive direction for you, Henry, which is, is awesome to hear, man. Oh, yeah. I feel like sometimes in this business, things move at a slower pace than you want them to. But I guess like you always you got to be doing a lot of things a little little by little add up to something big. Yeah, it's 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 a uh, it's a roller coaster, right? It kind of goes up and down. Yeah, I know, like, I do have some legions that are taking their, like, they're moving itty bitty slow, but, like, I know, I, I just saw some of them are, like, starting to creep onto page one now. Excellent. Yeah, that, that's, uh, that's great. I mean, it's, it's just like, just like we were just talking about, it's just a matter of time when that happens, right? Oh, yeah, I, I know, I'm not, like, I, I, some, I've been times where I've been freaking out and stuff, like, oh, I'm not getting it fast enough. And now I'm like saying, hey, it, and it happens. It just some, sometimes it takes longer than others. Right, right, absolutely. All right, brother. Well, it's uh, good to see you, man. Um, do we have any more wins? Anyone else? It looks like Spencer closed another one of his legions for 600 a month to start. The knowing knowing we'll revisit in a few months. So I know by this time we'll be raising the rent since it's a seasonal niche. Excellent, man. Yeah, it seems like you're really um Spencer, it seems like every week you're you're taking some big steps forward. And um that's that's awesome to awesome to see, man. I know that you're uh you're trying to close on that house. So um that will certainly help having a lot of people pay you extra money, right? Yeah, man, money, money definitely makes some problems uh, somewhat go away, right? So, so it's actually um, more, more money, less problems? Yeah, <laughs> somewhat a little bit, but uh, it probably creates more in the long run. But yeah. um, the, the great thing about it is it's the same method I talked about last week, you guys, that, that, that Patrick Shannon drug dealer method. You, 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 get them, you get them tasting a little bit of it, you know, two, three week trial, and then you circle back with them. Um, these guys are, are new in business. Uh, 
So they, you know, I was asking for a thousand. Um, I kept using Patrick's method of uh, making sure that, uh, you know, what we're doing is, is fair for both of us, right? And I never want to put somebody in a position as a business uh, that it's going to strap them and that they're going to resent paying me because it's just so tough. So we got them, uh, he, he, he came back at 600 bucks. I'm never going to turn money away, especially since this site was built last season before um, the season kicked in. This is the first season. It's a deck and fence site and uh, first season um, coming back around and bam, we had an early uh, start to nice weather out here in the Northwest. So in April, we, the, the site just started to produce. I started to panic. Like, what, what do you do, right? You got these calls coming in. Uh, Patrick said, hey, just get them into some hands of, of some, uh, you know, somebody can work them and then circle back with them. And so now the site's producing 600 bucks. Uh, the client's super happy. He just didn't want to get into a position where he's strapped, strapped for cash with paying us until he can get some wins under his belt. And then we're going to circle back in another couple months. In the meantime, there's a, there's a city that's fairly close to uh, where this main niche is. We have a GMB that's ranking, that's producing phone calls. Um, and so that method in the past, um, I've heard from others say, if you can get a GMB in a city without a website ranking and producing phone calls, then probably a good thing to, to build a site. So I'm going to take this guy's first 600 bucks, pay my web guy to, to, to build a site in, uh, in the other city that he's taking calls from and instantly going to probably double the volume so that when we do revisit here in a couple months, that there is actually uh, a reason for us to increase that rent to, to 800 to a thousand bucks a month. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and having lead generated there, you've got the numbers, you know, exactly what you've sent to him. So you've got an easy case to make of like, Hey, this is what I think the leads are worth. This is what we're sending you. I, I, I want to make sure that I'm always helping you. So we agreed to kind of like start off at this, but I'd like to like move more towards what it's worth. Just long-term, that's the only way it's going to work, right? So um, you've kind of set the stage and you've got money coming in from it now, which is great, right? So yeah. you're building trust, you're building confidence and you're, you're allowing this guy to have more business than he would otherwise, which is going to put him in a better financial situation and allow him to like raise. He probably has some like, some other expenses and stuff that he needs to get caught up a little bit on. And hopefully he can be responsible with his finances as he starts to get more jobs and, yeah. and, you know, be aware that there's a larger bill coming here. Right. And, well, and I, and I set the stage initially on the conversation. I had told him, you know, we normally uh, get a thousand to $2,000 uh, for this site in, in the major cities. Um, this, this site is actually in, uh, in a site that's 4 million plus, and it ranks number three in a lot of categories. And we haven't put any work into it at all. I haven't, there's zero reviews right now. Um, so once we start actually putting some work into the GMB, um, and getting some reviews on there, I don't see why not, why this, why this site doesn't go up to, you know, a couple of thousand a month once he kind of gets a little bit of wins under his belt. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome, man. It's, uh, it, it seems like you're on a good pathway now, um, not only with the site, but with your business, it's you, you're, you've been stacking wins and with that comes confidence. And with that confidence, this just gets like easier and easier. Right. Yep. Exactly. Cool. Awesome, man. Congrats on that. Do we have any other wins? Anybody else have anything they want to share? I got to keep you on track. Back, uh, time wise, Patrick, I know you have another meeting a little bit later. And just I make do. sure we have the time yep. to do everything. I appreciate it. Let's let's uh, let's move in, move move on, and, and you know, any of you guys um, that that have a win saved up, just like let's throw it in the chat because we, I think we celebrate those as a group. I think I think that's great. It helps us helps people that are struggling with some encouragements, and um, you know, it's uh, it's nice it's nice to get that pat that kind of attaboy when when you finally get to it too, right? So. I see Lou is asking a question in there, you know, in the event post. Hey, Patrick, I have five to six sites that are producing one or two leads a week at this point. I'd love to hear what your strategies are at this point in the asset life. So, Lou, so I think it's important to realize the strategies. There, there's no like blanket strategy that I can tell you when you're getting one to two leads a week. What I would be doing is I would be having a list of keywords that I'm putting into the heat map and I'm looking at my ranking for those keywords. 
And then I'm building a strategy towards those keywords to improve the ranking. Because if you're getting only one to two leads a week, okay, like if you're selling yachts, that's probably really good. But if it's for like carpet cleaning where something is going to be super high volume, then that's not very good at all, right? So not knowing the volume associated with it or the population associated with it, let's just assume it's like, you know, a city with four or 500,000 people and there's a decent amount of volume. So if that's the case, then you're, it's probably a result of you not ranking well enough. And, and maybe you, maybe that's what this question is for to start with, but um, you need to be looking at this. I would be getting potentially more GMBs, improving my rankings of GMBs. I would be adding reviews like as, so what we keep doing is we keep on like pounding the site with more and more reviews and um, more backlinks, right? And just constantly looking at the ranking of the GMBs, potentially adding more GMBs, right? So let's say that each one of your sites is bringing one to two leads per week, or each one of your GMBs is bringing one to two leads per week. Um, well, what if you had five of them instead of one? So now you're getting like 10 leads a week, which is 40 leads a month or more, right? Maybe 45, depending on how long the month is. So that's a big difference. And that's where that stacking starts to happen. And especially like if you're, let's as like carpet cleaning, terrible niche, don't go into it. But let's say my first GMB is like, um, you know, carpet cleaning Dallas. And then when I name a second GMB, I want to choose something that is targeting a different keyword. So I can get a diversity of rankings, right? Rather than just trying to go after the, the one term carpet cleaning. Maybe the next one is rug cleaning right? Or maybe the other one is like carpet cleaning company. I don't know. So I'm going to put some diversity in there so that I can kind of surround it and, and start to rank for some of these other keywords where it may take me a long time if my GMB is carpet cleaning to rank for rug cleaning. But if I have both of these and they both continuously get stronger through more citations, more reviews, asking those questions, that type of thing each one of these GMBs can level up a little bit. And this is what we're, what we're seeing, what Jeff and I were talking about in Phoenix, right? It's just been like, that's where we were. We're getting just a few reviews and we just keep on pounding on this thing. We're adding like two backlinks every week, right? We're probably adding two reviews every week. We're getting, we're adding more citations when we need them, right? We're, sometimes we're adding more content, depending on where we are. A lot of our sites, when we're in these competitive niches, like we will put 25 or 50 pages on the site, right? It's, it's, it's not like it's going to hurt it, right? And then you, you need to send backlinks to your new pages, right? If you have pages that are not getting any attention, send a couple backlinks to those new pages. So that page, so Google knows that those pages have some value, right? So these are some of the strategies that we use, but I think without more details, it's, it's hard to just have like a blanket strategy, right? Um, could use some more advice on how to claim income on taxes. Am I considered an independent contractor? When should I establish my own business? So, um, on this call, we, I, I, you know, I have a degree in accounting and Jeff's an attorney and maybe we should have a great answer for this, but I'll tell you, this is like such a, it's, it's such a person dependent, um, I don't think you're considered an independent contractor. Maybe Jeff knows more about that. I think you're more of like a self-proprietor, right? The sure answer would be create an LLC to protect yourself. This is not legal advice. This is my own personal musings is just create an LLC and run all your expenses through it. Pay yourself minimally. So I don't know what state you're in. Texas, you don't pay, pay state taxes, which is good. So uh, you would only pay personal taxes on what you pay yourself or take draws as. And most of the expenses or most of the expenses that you have, you could pull from your business account, which is, should be low, a little bit lower taxes, tax rate. That's yeah, so it's probably going to cost you a few hundred dollars to set that up. Um, yeah, it's pretty minimal nowadays. I mean, it's just filing fees. The paperwork is really simple. Even if you get like a legal zoom or something like that to, um, set it all up for you. It's a couple hundred, a few hundred bucks or whatever. 
uh, Legal I would Zoom is a great resource, Jeff. So thank you for throwing that out. I was going to tack in on that there's, as well. There's a, ton, there's a ton of them out there. Legal Zoom is, is probably the most. That's what I use. I use Legal Zoom. It yep. went fine. I don't, I don't even use them anymore because the documents mm -hmm. are so simple to create yourself. Right. It's a operating agreement. It's like one mm -hmm. page of stuff. Fill out the form and file it you know, with the state. And it's, it's even cheaper that way. Absolutely. I agree 100%. And, uh, you know, it, it, consult your advisors, you know, whether it's your attorney, whether it's your accountant, because everybody's scenario is different and each state is different. So take advantage of that. Excellent. Um, so hopefully that kind of gives you some advice. That was, that was Alex Bentley. Um, all right. So Jonathan Chamberlain, he has two questions. Pre-selling lead gens, um, pre-sell lead gen full stack strategy from finding a business, prospecting strategies, your pitch to closing. I'm particularly interested in handling objections and spinning the fact that we own the site. A role play with Jeff would be nice. Um, yeah, I mean, we could, I, I think we could do that. It's, um, I'll tell you what, like, uh, there, I th after going through and doing tons and tons of sales, I think it really comes down to two things uh, for me is, is one is just kind of listening and building the rapport and establishing a connection with the person, right? That helps with trust. And two is instilling confidence into the person that you're trying to sell. They need to know that you are the person that is going to, uh, that can deliver for them, right? There's a lot of positioning that happens around this. And we've talked about this a lot on previous calls, all this stuff, all the framing, your, your tone, what you ask for, what you agree to, like the kind of demands you make on your end are going to set up that positioning, right? So I've seen, um, I can't remember who it was last week. Um, they sent me like a, um, a copy of like a text string and there was just like some small tweaks that, that you can make that completely change the tone of the conversation, right? And sometimes pe when people do that, I'm like, I, like my first thought is, I wouldn't have said it that way because that's implying this other thing. You just need to be really conscious when you're thinking. And, um, you know, it's, it's a chess game to some extent, right? So one thing about pre-selling lead gen, I, and I mentioned this, and I, I always leave when I talk to people thinking that this is not clear. Pre-selling lead gen, in my opinion, sounds a lot cooler than what it actually is because what, what's the plan here is you're going to, let's say that you, you sign someone up for, let's say $1,500 a month. Okay. So you have no, nothing built for them. What, what do you do next? You're going to run ads, right? If you're not skilled with ads, um, that's a lot to manage. And I would almost go so far, so, so far as to say that like Google ads is more complex than Legion. And you're just going to like, it's not something you just tack on. Yeah, it's, it could be easy to set them up. But if you don't know what you're doing, it's going to get really expensive really fast. So a lot of times, let's say you do set it up and you know what you're doing. A lot of your 1500 that you just collected is, is going out the window. Not only that, it's going to continue to go out the window until you have a ranking site, right? So now that you have, uh, you know, your, your, um, building your ranking site and you're spending money on that. Maybe you're spending money on backlinks and citations and paying people for GMBs and development of your sites and all these different content, all these different pieces. And you're also spending money on, on the ad. So this is a situation we found where we're really good at pre-selling the lead gen, but the problem was it was kind of like a losing endeavor until we got the site to rank. So I encourage you guys to when possible, I know, I know that it, it can seem like it's fast money, but I've done the math and I've seen this a lot of times. A lot of times it's not what it appears to be. When, when it gets good is when you have a ranking site. That's when the money comes in, right? And maybe that's not what you guys want to hear, but it seems to be the reality to me for the most part. So now pre-selling lead gen, the way that Jeff and I have done it and moved towards is like where we take a fee up front and then we're like, you're not going to pay us anything until we start sending you leads. So that way the person has some skin in the game and now we got money. We don't have to like run ads, right? And it's all just based on ranking. So if you continue to collect money from these people without running ads, then what you're going to find is like, 
probably month three, when the person's made their third payment, they're not going to be happy to make their fourth payment if they haven't gotten any business for it. Because that seems like that 90 days seems to be a long time for them, right? And, and they, they don't have any proof that you're going to deliver someday, right? And they're not going to just keep paying you forever, regardless of how well the initial conversations go and how apparent it is that they're going to be, that they understand that this takes time, right? That's just been my experience. So I think a lot of the ability to sell the pre-sell legion is going to come down to that, like what, what we talked about, the confidence. And, and um, Jeff and I can, we can do a little role play here in a second. Um, best advice strategies are, or hacks we can give to a small business to help them grow, be more efficient and save, make money. Um, that's a tough, that's, I mean, that, that's a tough question. I think there's a lot of like broad responses that could be applied to that, right? Like, obviously they need to have good systems in place. So at, when someone comes in, they need to be maximizing on that. They need to be getting reviews from all like reputation management. They need to be getting those reviews from, from people that come in, right? It's just like, uh, it seems like a no brainer in, in ensuring that their, their customers are happy. How can we like, they need more visibility out there. I don't know that there's like necessarily some like easy hacks, but um, you know, part of this for, for us, and I, don't, I, I kind of have moved away from this attitude of just looking at ourselves as like this Legion company and have moved towards like a consultancy role where like we've worked with enough businesses and, you know, it's kind of like how we're able to spot some red flags is like, some of the stuff that we do, some of the little hacks and things that we do can absolutely be applied to our clients and, and our businesses, right? So sharing that with them and passing some of that stuff on there, um, it's a point by point basis, like just understanding that indeed, like I shared this, I don't know when, a couple months ago, but um, one of our contractors was having a hard time finding good people. So we posted an ad on Indeed for them. And we, I had one of the people on my team just look through it and then choose out some candidates and then pass them on to our, who actually ended up hiring one of them. So like some of the people just don't know how the internet works and kind of sharing that with them or ways to be more efficient with some of this stuff, right? I don't have any like quick hacks on, um, I don't know if that properly answers your question, Jonathan. Um, it's, it's, that second part is a really tough question for me to answer. Um, so Jeff, do you want to do like a little role play? I think you know, yeah. not only, I'm sure, aside from Jonathan, I think a lot of people would probably get something out of this. Um, yeah, let's give it a shot. You, you want to be a contractor? Okay. What, uh, let's pick a niche. You want to be in like roofing or what, what do you want to do? Yeah, roofing, that's pretty standard issue. Okay, so we'll pretend that I'm just like calling you up and they say, um, um, hey, Jeff, how you doing? Thanks for, thanks for taking my call. How are things going for you? Good. How are you? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm doing really well. Um, business is good and, and we're growing, but um, you know, it's, it's an exciting time. Um, so tell me a little bit about your business, Jeff. Uh, well, I have two crews and I work, you know, pretty much in the South part of my city. I've been in business for 10 years and I do okay. You know, I have some uh, Yelp pages and you know, I have a, I have a website and, you know, Facebook, I get a lot of referrals because I do a good job and people know me, you know, through church and everything like that. Like a lot of people know my name. Cool. It sounds like, it sounds like you're, um, you're pretty active in your community. Um, I wouldn't say that, you know, I, I go to church a couple times a month. That's about it. But, you know, people know me there and, um, you know, just word, word gets around when somebody has a, a problem with the roof, they, you know, they call me. Yeah, that's good. So, you, um, Jeff, when you're going to church, you, you, I always like, you know, what we do is, is certainly not for everyone. And I know that, you know, a little bit about it because we set this call up. Um, but we've gotten to the spot now where we don't really take on every person. Um, we, when I first started my company, I, you know, that's what we did, but now it's more, it's become more about like, what's a really good fit. So I'd like to just hear a little bit more about you and um, you know, where you're trying to take this business to see if it is a good fit. 
because it's, you know, that's the only way it's going to work long-term. So Jeff, you got, are, are you married? Do you have kids? What, what's your, uh, what, what's going on with you? Yeah. yeah. I got an old lady and a couple of kids. How are sure. your kids? They're uh, 10 and 12. 10 and 12. Are they in the sports? Uh, a little bit. Yeah. Do you, are, are, do you have a situation happening where you're kind of like spending a lot of time working and then you end up missing the, the, the sporting events for your kids? Oh uh, yeah. Sometimes. I mean, I, I do work a lot, you know, but I, I didn't, I just thought you were going to like try to sell me some, some marketing stuff. Like I didn't know you're, I didn't really realize you're going to ask me all these questions. Yeah. Like I said, man, we don't take on everyone. Um, I view this as more than just like a, a, a like marketing thing. I kind of view it as a partnership. Um, you know, we've gotten to the point now, and I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you, Jeff, like signing you up is really not going to change much for me financially. What will change things for me is if I have a, a positive impact on someone and I want to make sure that that's the case. You know, I've, I've had to get rid of clients in the past because they were hotheads and it's just like, it's not worth it for me to try to deal with a person like that. So this call is kind of like, trying to feel you out a little bit and understand where, where you are and, and, and see if it's a good fit for us and, you know, see if we're, see if we vibe because neither one of us are going to want to do this long-term if we don't like each other or, you know, you know, it's, it just doesn't feel right. So um, I'm the owner of the company, you know, I'll tell you, we've got 30 people in our agency. We're in almost every state in the United States. Um, we've got more than 10,000 leads coming in a month. I know that, that, uh, um, you, you were a referral and, and you've heard of us. So, um, you know, I, I know that maybe, you know, you know what we're talking about, but, you know, obviously we can show you some of this stuff if necessary, but I don't really want to get to that. I just kind of want to more dive into this and, and see, see where you're trying to take this. It sounds like you're working a decent amount of hours is do you, what's your vision for this company. Um, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, I've been in business for 10 years. Like I said, I, I, I just, uh, I, I just taking it day by day. I'm trying to figure it out. You know, I think I do a good job. Of course, I'd like to get, get bigger and, and grow more, but I just haven't had the, uh, the opportunities to do that. Um, what do you think's limited your opportunity to do that? Why haven't you been able to do it? Uh, I think just because I haven't had, I haven't had the opportunity. I, I get, you know, the deals that I get and I do those deals and, and um, you know, that's about as far as it goes. Like I just haven't, uh, you know, if there's more enough business coming in, then I could hire more people, but I haven't been in a position where I was forced to do that. Right. Right. Yeah. It's, that's, that's the hard thing, right. With growing the business is, is um, not only having the, not only having the business to support paying more people, but actually like finding these, these people. So, Let's say that you were able to grow it and everything goes well. Let's say maybe two, three years from now, what, how are things going to be different for you? Not only in the business, but like, what, like, how is that going to affect your life? Why is this important? Well, I guess I could make more money if I had more, more business. Right. Yeah. Is it, would you, would you try to, um, would you be trying to make more money just to be able to buy like a nicer car or is your plan to kind of hire people and have more free time to spend with your family? Uh, it'd be great to spend more time with the kids, you know, go out fishing. Maybe, I mean, I don't, I'd like to have a boat. I don't really yeah. have cars, but a boat, boat sounds good. Nice, nice. So um, what city are you in? I'm in Austin. You're in Austin. There's a lot of lakes over there in Austin, huh? Yeah, a lot. So where are you going to go out? You're going to take that boat out on Lake Travis and go fishing with your kids. Is that the plan? Yeah, man, I'll take it all over. All right. Are you, are, are, are you worried that, that, um, that I just totally lost my train of thought, man. <laughs> Thinking too many things. Um, are, are you, um, are you worried that your, your kids are going to go out there and catch bigger fish than you? Is that, is, is that, is that a thing? Uh, I doubt that would happen. Are you that you're the king fisherman here? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay, guys. So I just want to take a break for a second and say, look, this is what I'm doing is trying to build a little bit of rapport, work some jokes in there. Um, you know, just keep it kind of like casual. It doesn't have to be so formal, right? I've heard some of your guys calls before 
excuse me, before, and it gets to be like really, really formal and business-like. We can joke around and kind of like bullshit with each other, right? It's like this disarms the person a little bit, right? So you can't get too far into this where you kind of go off into Pluto and, and then you're not like talking about business. So let's kind of like, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to bring it back a little bit. So, um, so Jeff, the way that we do things in our agency is we build the sites, okay? We've done this all over the United States and we rank the sites. So if you want to grow and you're serious about growing, that's one of the things that I look for in companies. When I say we're not always a good fit for people, because what we do is um, I'm very competitive. You know, I, I come from a sports background and um, when we go into a city, our goal is to take over the entire city. Okay. Which sounds great when you're trying to grow, but what it's, it becomes a problem when it gets overwhelming and you can get buried. And a lot of people, they don't like that. There's going to be growing pains that happen here. Jeff, do you have the ability to hire more people? If you had more business, do you have like a network of people that would join your company? Well, right now, most of them are kind of like friends and family, you know, like I have a, a couple of cousins who, who help me out and, and uh, you know, my brother and I have another crew that kind of steps in when I have enough work for them. And I, I just kind of like have hired, you know, people around me. So yeah, there's, there's plenty of people through, you know, my kids, sports teams and, and whatever, you know, people, people are always wanting to, wanting to work. Right. Well, you know, this isn't going to be like something that gets turned on overnight. It takes us time to ramp up, right? I know that you probably get a lot of calls from these marketing people that say, hey, I'll get you to the top of Google in like 30 days. They're, like roofing is really competitive and it takes us a long time. But what we've seen in other markets is when we get someone there, it can make all the difference in the world. You know, we have a, we have a client in Las Vegas that had been in business for 22 years just like you, he's got two kids and he had two crews. And over the last two and a half years, he's gone from two crews to 11 crews, right? And the business is coming from us, but it, it was something that kind of happens gradual. It is important that you have the skills over time to kind of put these people in place. And I know that you mentioned that you have some family, but you know, as this thing starts to grow, you need to be thinking about things long-term because otherwise you're gonna get buried when this thing starts to starts to like crank up okay which sounds good but i'll tell you we've we're not a company that's going to stick around with somebody who's not servicing the people that we send because of the fact that we build the sites if you're not taking care of the sites you're not taking care of the customers then they're going to come back to us and that's not going to look good on us and it just won't work long term if that's the case does that make sense jeff uh yeah yeah that, that makes sense I mean, I always do a good job. That's why I get the referrals that I get. I've, I've seen that. I've seen your reviews on Yelp and it seems like you really care. And, um, you know, when you're kind of like getting it from referrals, then you kind of have this pace that you can work at. But when, you know, it turns into a fire hose, it can get a little bit more stressful. And, it, and it's obvious because of where you are and, and, and surviving for 10 years on referrals that you do care about these people, right? So, we just got to make sure that we start to get some systems in place. And Jeff, I like, you know, I've done this with companies all over the United States, finding somebody that wants to grow their business because they want to spend more time with, with their family. Um, you know, this is, this is part of why we do this, right? I, I'm, I'm very in tune with your goal here. And it's not like I'm going to nickel and dime you for things, but as we grow, as this becomes more valuable, then we, we grow together. Right. So I typically what we do is we're going to start you off with like a, a startup cost and then we're not going to charge you anything until business starts to come in. And at that point, it'll be whatever. Like, you know, we'll look at it and see what it is approximately monthly. And then as that number grows, then we kind of grow together. Right. So, um, you know, if I'm putting like five dollars in your pocket and charging you one dollar and then that turns into ten dollars in your pocket, now we charge you two dollars. So this is kind of what I mean when we say this is more than um, just like this marketing thing. It's a partnership where our goals are aligned. And that's why we've set things up this way. We don't charge for, you know, all the work that we're going to do on our end. We just charge a startup cost. You know that you have some skin in the game. Does that sound fair? I mean, it's, 
You definitely don't sound like most of the marketing people who call me. The only reason I'm talking to you is because I was having a beer with Jimmy the other night and he, he told me to call you. So yeah, Jimmy knows how to drink beer, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I'll have to, I'll have to buy him one. I appreciate, I appreciate Jimmy reaching out and, 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 uh, you know, spreading the word about our company. It, it, it's, uh, it means the world to me that my clients have success, right? So we kind of pour our heart into it. I'm ultra competitive on this stuff. So when we come into Austin, one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to look around at the competitors in Austin and we're going to make a list and we're going to put these guys on a dartboard and we're throwing darts at them every day. I am going to absolutely destroy the competition in here. Okay. That's kind of how we go. And that's why Jimmy wants to refer people is because Jimmy has, has kind of felt that and it's, and it's grown his business. So for us, it, you know, we're not a normal marketing company. This is like a domination strategy. And that's why I said from the beginning, it's got to be the right type of person because not everybody vibes with that. Some people want to work nine to five, right? And some people want to grow multi-million dollar businesses. And the people that we partner with are the people that want to grow those multi-million dollar businesses. So, um, you know, I get it. If that doesn't sound like you, that's totally cool. I'm sure there's a lot of other companies out there that can assist you. But if you're trying to grow and take over Austin for roofing, then like we're one vehicle that may be able to help. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know, man. I mean, I don't even talk to those other people anymore. Like I pay some money to Yelp every month and, you know, the phone rings. I don't even know how many calls I get. I don't understand what you do, but it, I don't know. How much money are we talking about here? Like, so you... Our startup cost is $1,500 a month. And then after that, it's going to be wow. based on what we're sending you. So a startup fee of $1,500 a month, is that what you mean? That's right, yeah. So uh, like I said, it's it, you know probably what's gonna happen is we're gonna go into the red, but I don't wanna, like, we've got a lot of people that are interested in our service from around the country and we have to decide who we're gonna play with. So uh, we have a startup cost, that's how we do it. Um, and uh, you know, you won't be charged anything else until um, until we get some business coming coming in for you. So it's fifteen hundred dollars startup or for a month or how, how does that work? Fifteen hundred dollars startup. So you pay that now, and then um, once we have leads coming in, so let's say I don't know, I, I I'm not going to promise you a time period. Anyone who tries to promise you that time period, like nobody knows. Google Google doesn't have some like playbook that tells us when our site's going to rank, right? So, um, but you know, we've done this and it's, it's just going to take some time, which may be frustrating to hear, but, um, we'll give you updates. You can kind of see the site moving as we go through, um, you know, you, you'll see the sites that we build. We'll probably build multiple sites and, um, you know, you'll see the stuff moving, you see the progress and then the start, the call, the calls will start to come in. And, um, you know, we have tracking in place so you can see we, we complete transparency. Everything that comes in will go right to you. Um, and, you know, we've got we've got systems in place to manage all this for you. So so that when people call, they only call me, they're not calling a bunch of other companies or anything. That's correct. Oh, wow. That's correct. Thank so you. what we do is is always exclusive. Right. So I know. Um, have you worked, Jeff, have you worked with uh, one of these like home advisor type sites before, or has it just been mostly Yelp? Man, all my friends said, stay away from home advisor. Yeah. I've heard that from all of, all of our clients seem to have tried it. And you know, what they do is they'll sell it multiple times. And, and when I started this business, I didn't want, uh, I didn't, I didn't, I wanted to kind of put a dent in, in how they do things and, and give people a better solution. So what we do is, is always 100% exclusive. So the leads come in, they go to you, they're tracked. You can play back the calls and, and kind of hear a recording of, of yourself just to kind of make sure that, that what we say is, you know, you, you'll, be able to, you'll be able to connect one-to-one -one and, and see, see that what we're saying is true. So how, how many calls do you think I should get for 1500 bucks a month? Like, what do you think I should get out of that? Um, Cause I could carve off some of my, my Yelp budget. Cause honestly, I don't, I think they overcharge me. Yeah. Yelp is um, Yelp seems like it works really well in some areas, but you know, not so much in others. Um, we're going to, we're going to charge $1,500 a month when, when we think that the leads are worth $1,500 a month. So like, let's say a residential roofing lead is worth, 
$65 and we look and we're like, okay, um, you know, we've sent um, 25 leads. So maybe that's more than 1500. So we'll kind of discount it and make sure those things go to you. There's more commercial. Um, we try to, we try to kind of look at what the flow is and then step it back a little bit and assign a flat fee based on what we're sending. We don't do contracts, so you can cancel anytime, right? So let's say that you're paying, let's say you're paying for like 25 leads a month. And then for whatever reason, it tanks. I'd be happy to give you a refund on that month. Um, but what, what I found is I don't need contracts if I just kind of like deliver value to you. So our goal in, in, in our agency is really to make it expensive for you not to use our service, right? So if you're, if you're spending 1500 and I'm putting 10,000 in your pocket, it's pretty expensive for you not to use our service. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I'm pretty good. Like you said, you don't want to work with high I'm not, as you can see, I'm pretty chill. I, I can, I can get the deals that I, that I have coming in right now for the referrals because it's easier to close them you know, right. when, they, when I've been introduced, you know, same way that you're, you know, I was introduced to you from Jimmy. So yeah. These are yeah. Calls it's going to be coming in that way. You know, it's, I don't know these people. Right. Absolutely. That, so these leads are going to be a little bit harder, harder to close. So just to be upfront and honest with you is, you know, a referral is always going to be the easiest lead, but the good thing about these leads that, that come through us is they're, they're coming in through Google and before they get to you, here's what happens is they decide they want something. So they search Google, right? That's like, we don't go to home advisor or we don't go to like Facebook when we want something to be done now. Like if, if my roof is leaking, I'm going to find someone that can come right away. So they search Google and that's where they find us. And then they, go to our site and then they call the phone number on the site and then it goes to you. So the motivation is high, but the thing is, Jeff, they don't know you. So they're not going to trust you to the same extent as a referral is. And, and one of the things that, that we kind of require is that we get reviews from you over time. When you go out and you do a great job, you've created an asset and these reviews will help your website rank better and it will help you close easier It'll probably allow you to close for a larger amount. So um, the reviews are really important. And we've got some systems in place that can help you get those reviews because of how important they are. Uh, but like you said, it's going to be a little bit harder to close some of these. They're not referrals. They don't know you. Your conversion rate may go from, uh, I don't know, 60% to 40% or 30%, depending on you know, how, how, how good of a salesperson you are and, and other things. Right. So, so what you're telling me is that if I pay you $1,500, then you're going to go do something on the web or something. And then whenever it starts, the phone starts to ring, then you're going to charge me again. That's right. We're, we'll, we'll give you some, um, we'll give you some kind of leeway. You know, I'd love for you to get that $1,500 back before we charge you again, but we'll get some stuff starting to come in. But when it really starts to, uh, when it really starts to come in and be consistent, then you and I can talk and, and we can come up with a number that makes sense. And if that, that time you decide it, it doesn't make sense to, like I said, there's we're, you're not under contract, but we found that that's almost never the case. You know, when, when we start to bring these leads in there, if we have somebody that, that takes care of the people and can respond quickly, then it, it's just, it, it's beautiful and it works really, really well. Yeah. Well, I, I always try to take care of my, my, my customers, you know, yeah, I can feel that. I can feel that. And, and I saw your reviews on Yelp, man. It looks like you've been for a long time. You've been um, you've been doing really hard work to try to make these people happy. And, and you know, it, it's unfortunate that the person that gets the most business is not necessarily the, the people that care about the business the most. Right. Or care about the, the person the most. So, you know, that's part of why I try to do these calls and, and really understand the person to find out, is this my type of person? Because like, you know, when we come in there and, and we take over a town, you know, I, I kind of feel a moral obligation to be sending these people to someone who's really good at what they do. And, and I don't want to be sending them to someone that's going to cause problems or, you know, not honor their work or, or scam these people somehow. So, you know, I've got a good feeling about you. If, if you know, if you'd like to get started, like I said, it's $1,500. Um, you know, if, if this isn't for you, that's totally cool. Um, but, you know, as, as you saw with your friend, Jimmy, 
And, um, you know, I could send you over some, some reports if that were necessary, but, but um, I think you kind of get the gist of what we do. Is this something you'd like to get started with? Well, I mean, I'd love to grow. I just never, I'm not a marketer. I don't know how to do that. So I never. Hey man, I, I get it. I'm not a roofer, right? Right. So the goal here is to kind of like make things easier for you. So you can focus on what you do and we can kind of be your technology partner. So if you can, if you can answer the phone and, and take care of the stuff, it's not super important. You understand what's going on our, on our end. Um, just like it's not important for me to understand the different nails or whatever, you know? Right. Um, so. Yeah. I'm not going to understand it, but I know that, uh, you know, there's a couple guys in town who, who are, they're just, they're, they seem to get all the business other than the referrals that I get, you know, they, they seem to dominate the town and they're not necessarily the most honest people around if you get my drip. So yeah, I'd, love to, I'd love to beat that. I'd love to get, you know, get some of that business that they're getting. If you can, yeah, absolutely. That, you know, I'm all about it. For sure. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's kind of exactly what, that's that's what motivates me you know a lot of times i'll be up 1 a.m on a friday um trying to figure out how we can dethrone some of these people that don't deserve to be getting this business um like i said i'm super competitive and when we bring someone on your comp your competitors are my competitors and and i don't like losing I, i'm not going to lose to these people right so um that's that's kind of the mindset that that has led to people like jemmy um, you know, having a couple of drinks and then talking about marketing. Right. So, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's what we look for in a client is someone that wants to take over and, 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 you know, take care of these people the way they should be taken care of. Well, it sure would be, be good to beat a couple of those guys. So I didn't have the, I didn't have this $1,500 in my budget. Is there, it's like the 20th of the month, like right now, like how does this work as far as. So, like, yeah. Else? So we always prorate to the first of the month. So if you were to come on today, today's the, today's the um, 19th, tomorrow will be the 20th. So we'll call it the 20th. So, um, you know, we could, what we could do is we could do 500 to today and then a thousand on the first. And that could give you a little bit of time to kind of get your ducks in a row. And then, like I said, we won't charge anything else until, um, until we get some leads coming in. Oh, you can do that. That sounds, that sounds totally fair. 500. Yeah, so it'd be 500 today and then 1,000 on the first. And then, um, yeah, you'll get a receipt. Everything will be good. So all, all I need from you, I just need your, your, um, a little bit of credit card information. And um, you should get a receipt in your email a couple minutes after that. Okay, cool, man. Yeah, let, let's go ahead and give it a shot. Okay, awesome. Jeff, I know that, I know that this, this feels like a little bit of a risk to you and you haven't done this before, but um, you know, we're committed and we have a whole team behind us to really make a difference. So I want you to be patient. Like I said, I don't know how long it's gonna take. Roofing is competitive, but um, you know, if you, you're, you're patient with us, it's, it's gonna happen. It's just a question of when, okay? So um, I just wanna prep you for that. And like I said, we'll keep on shipping away. I, I, I do have one more request from you, Jeff, is um, you know, one of the things that helps us rank these sites is um, we need addresses, right? So basically it's like an antenna wherever we set one of these addresses up that's where the signal is going to be the strongest so all it is is, you, is we register something google sends a postcard and then inside that postcard there's a code so you need to give that code to us your stuff won't show up on google um it's possible that that it could like get some junk mail um but um it's going to show up kind of like a pen on the map so setting up these locations around the austin area is going to allow us to um, accelerate this ranking process. So I don't live in Austin and, and you do. So I imagine that you have some people, we can't do like a post office box, but maybe you just have a couple, it could be like a residential or um, a business address that we could send this postcard. Do you have something like that, Jeff? Well, I got my address and my cousins, my two cousins. Yeah. Awesome. That'd be a great start. Um, we've got ways to get other ones, but it's always great to, um, to have some, to have our clients, um, kind of help us out just to kind of get over that, that barrier of not being local. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you a questionnaire. Okay. It's going to say, um, it's going to say the name of our agency. So it's just some questions that have, um, that our team can look at. Like I mentioned, we have several people on our team, so it's going to come in your email. Just fill this out for us. And it helps us get up to speed to make sure that we have all the information we need 
to really tailor and strata, tailor and, and build our strategy around your business. So it's gonna, you know, it's gonna ask you about the areas that you want to target. So you're gonna want to put those in priority order, like the question says, and and you know, some of the services that that you guys provide. I know that you do roofing, but there's also a lot of different types of roofing, right? So um, when you get that questionnaire, just kind of fill that thing out. And um, our whole team will use that and it, it, it'll be really helpful for us. Does that make sense, Jeff? Uh, yeah, get to the questionnaire. Yeah, sure. I can do that. Okay, awesome. All right, guys. So I'd love to hear any questions that you guys have. Um, maybe this is how your guys' calls go. This is how a lot of mine have gone. It's It feels noticeably different to me to have a bunch of people watching me while I do this than when I'm on the call, right? And um, a lot of times I'll dig deeper with the uh, kind of building the rapport and, and get to know them a little bit more. Um, yeah, that's always great information. All that stuff that Patrick was pulling out in the, in the first part of the call. And it was like all, almost like right when he stopped and switched gears was exactly when I was like, hey, you want to switch gears, <laughs> you know? Like in my own head, like I was ready for him to do that. So it's like the timing was perfect. So Patrick has a lot of these sort of like chunks of, of information and different ways that he presents things that, that I've learned from him. And I do this on my calls too. So instead of like trying to be all defensive and, and be, you know, posing a bunch of objections, I just wanted to let him roll uh, with the information because he presents things so amazingly well. I just wanted to give him the space to do that without trying to jam him up and being sort of a contrarian uh, type of a, a role play, you know? So if you, if you get referrals, which a lot of the, the people that we pitch to are referrals, you're going to find that they're not, they're not confrontational. Like I wasn't confrontational. It's just like, yeah, well, you know, this, this guy is having a beer with him he told me you were a badass marketer and, you know, he's got a down payment on a Corvette now. And I want to have that, you know, like, what do I have to do? You know, and then you, you don't have to go into all this like hyper detail about the business model and, and this, that, and the other, you just kind of feel them out, um, you know, give them the information that they want or need and, and then move on to the next phase and, and not get too jammed up in the weeds because they, they're never going to understand it. They don't need to understand it. And same way Patrick said, you don't need to understand real uh, he doesn't even understand roofing either. I can I can only say that I believe that uh, most all of us would agree. This was a conversation, not an inquisition, where you just bombarded somebody with question after question after question. This was really just that a conversation where you got to know the person. Yeah, that, that's the way we operate. And, and like I've made reference to it on these calls before, like I, I know where my, my clients, you know, I know what their their passions are, if they're, they love doom buggies or they love this or that or the other, like I, I generally know because I had the same conversation that Patrick just had with me, you know, that, that's, our, that's our approach. So super role play, I absolutely love it. Awesome, yeah, that was not, um, that was pretty impromptu, I didn't, uh... You guys kind of saw I read the question there. Um, to be honest, like I'm glad that you guys saw this, but for me, it kind of felt like it didn't flow as well as it does in a normal conversation. I know that Jeff's like inventing answers to questions and he's not necessarily passionate about the things that he's speaking of because it's not a real person. But I've found that like talking to the real people, like you guys, I think it's important to be ultra focused on like the way that the person, whatever they're saying, like. So the, the, the communication process kind of works like this, right? We have an idea or a feeling in our head. We try to think of the words to say it. So a little bit's lost there. And then it comes out and a little bit more is lost. And it comes into this person's ear. They've got their own things, more is lost. And then we think about it. So you need to take every piece of information that's available to you and try to be thinking about that and using it and be like ultra focused on this person. So the person is like, seems like they're angry, right? Then calibrate to that, right? Like adjust for that a little bit. If like, like Jeff, when he said, like, I don't like, I don't really understand the marketing to me that came across as like, there's like a little bit of doubt here. So how do, how do I adjust there? Right. Is like, I don't need to try to beat him over the head and, and say this, but I will, you know, 
kind of bridge the gap with maybe like, um, no, I get it. I totally, I understand how that is. Like Yelp, Yelp is, Yelp is rough. Like Yelp, there's a lot of people that are unhappy. It works. I think I said it works well in some markets, but not in others. Right. So not trying to argue with him, just kind of like accepting it and then kind of like moving it down the tracks a little bit more. Right. So and a lot of them, you know, I, I know we all have our, our stories about, you know, cold prospecting is, is much, I don't know, I don't really consider it diff difficult. I, I consider it to be, it's just another part of the game, right? It's like, I, I have pretty decent success with, with pulling people into my world and getting a conversation going because I just, I just feel it out, you know? But if it's the wrong person and it's obviously somebody that, an energy that I don't want to, that I don't vibe with, like, I'll just disqualify them. He's like, okay, I'm talking to the wrong person. Like, I got to go. Like, this is, you know, so I don't try to sell everybody. It's like, I don't have to make every sale, right? If it's, if you feel like it's the wrong person, bounce, you know, don't waste your time. I think that a lot of us get into the, to the idea that, well, if we're a good salesman, then we're going to, we're going to turn them around, you know, some, sometimes maybe, but you got to feel it out. And, you know, for us, we, you know, again, just having the luxury of being able to choose your clients. It's like, if they're that far gone, like, I don't want to have to coach them for the next, you know, however long. Some people I will, if I have, if I make a connection with them and they seem like they're, they could be the right client. Sometimes I go bend over backwards to make them into what I think they can be. And sometimes I, I, I pay the price for that, you know, but the thing is, is that you don't, you can't, not every person is going to be able to be a perfect client or the client that you even want on the books, you know? Right. So Absolutely. And, and you can see from that, that whole time, that positioning, that's kind of what I've talked about. It was like, I don't think Jeff ever felt like I was going to like die if I didn't get his business, but right? <laughs> that was not coming across as like, I have to like close this person or it's like, I'm not going to have lunch tomorrow. Right. It's like, what, like, I got to make sure this is a fit on both sides. Like I made that clear from the beginning. We don't work with everyone. We work like there was four or five times in that conversation where I was like hinting at the fact that maybe we won't work together. Right. Like, like maybe I'll make the decision that we won't work together instead of like, you got to try this. And like, there's no desperation on my side. Right. Like I, I told him, Hey, we've got people that are paying us and we choose who we're going to work with. It's 1500. That's our starting cost. I didn't say take it or leave it, but I kind of just let it hang there as to like, take it or leave it. Right. That's how it's going to be. I'm not, I'm, I'm like, I don't, I don't need you. And so that's an art. You don't want to come out and say that, but that right there, implies a lot more value so when you get to the spot and this is where it's hard when you're getting started where you have like joseph said four clients last month right so this could make a big difference in your business and when it gets to the point where it won't make a big difference in your business i will promise you this will get easier to do this because you won't have that kind of like stink of desperation but if you can fake it till you make it and like set up these ground rules of like, Hey, we've got people lining up for our business. We don't work with everyone. Like, then they're like, Whoa, okay. This is not what I'm used to hearing. This sounds like what they have is worth something where they're willing to turn it away because they know they're going to find somebody else. Right. So that's, what's going through their mind. And that positioning on the call is really important to establish that. So for those of you guys um, that, you know, maybe that seemed foreign to, there's a reason that it was done that way. And I think like what you can do, this helps is you can do this role playing that Jeff and I did. You guys can do this with each other. You can set up these calls and just kind of like run through it. Or, you know, I'd be happy to um, be on the other end of it. If one of you guys wants to try to pitch me and, and, and uh, you know, we can do that not on this call, but maybe next week or, or uh, another call in the future. So any, any questions or anything um, related to this? I was just going to say real quickly, Patrick, that, you know, one of the reasons that I didn't push back on price is because we were talking about a high level niche. You know, you're talking about an expensive niche, 1500 bucks is like, you know, Yelp is for, for a roofing niche client. Like how much is Yelp charging a month? You know, I didn't get into that because it's like 1500 bucks is kind of a bargain, right? For uh, roofing marketing. So right. um, I, I just didn't even go there and, and kind of challenge him on that. 
Um, and a lot of these, these people that come in from referrals, we don't get much pushback on the price. It's not, it's not like that. It's kind of like, we, you know, I think the way that Patrick and I position it, I mean, Patrick is, is definitely better than I am, but you know, the way that he positions it and positioned it with me is that it's like, that, that's the price, you know, like we're, we're not going to discount. We're not a discount type of a solution. Um, if you want to work with us, this is the price. And, and so let's move forward. And I think that they, they get that throughout the conversation. So there's no challenge at the end. There's no, well, can you do it for a thousand or whatever? Like, I, I don't hear that in my conversations. And I think it's because of this position that I don't even notice anymore. It's just in that languaging that Patrick is talking about. That's right. That That's exactly what I was saying when, um, like, there's a level of certainty that's coming across in this and like, that's part of the framing. So when we started answering this question from Jonathan about like pre-selling, like when you can speak to people with this kind of like confidence and certainty of what's going to happen, like the pushback, just a lot of it gets eliminated, right? Or they'll like kind of throw out some weak attempts, like a thousand's too much, um, is there anything that you can do for me? And like, Hey, we can break it up, but our, our starting price is, is, or 1500 is too much. Is there anything you can do to me? Our starting price is 1500. That's, that's, that's how it is. And, you know, unfortunately we got to the spot where, um, you know, we've had to make decisions on the people that we're going to work with. We don't have unlimited resources, but for the people that we work with, we go all in and, you know, we have to make decisions on, you know, and, and this is a business. So, yeah, that's, it's a massive pattern interrupt when you take that approach, you know, and that's why we don't get the pushback, you know, because it's like people aren't used to hearing that conversation. They hear, they've heard a bunch of people say, Hey, are you the business owner? You know, do you want more leads and X, Y, and niche and C, you know, it's like, whatever. They've heard that a million times, but then nobody's asking about their kids, right? They're asking for their credit card number. And so when they hear that, this kind of conversation, it, it does disarm them. And, it, and it, there is a, a lot more trust that I think is established from the framing that Patrick's talking about. Hey, Patrick and Jeff, can I ask you guys a question? Sure. What's up, Harry? How you doing, buddy? Good. So I don't have any problems in these conversations once they get going. And an example would be if I go into a bar, you know, and I'm sitting there and a perfect stranger sits down beside me. It's like nothing to just turn and say, hey, what do you do? you know, boom. And the conversation will go from there and it'll flow. And in my experience, I can go anywhere. I mean, within, usually within a few minutes, I can be asking the most intimate of questions about this person's life and who they're married to and what they're doing and what kind of problems they're having, diseases they have, anything comes up. It's, it's, but with this, my current uh, issue is, is I want to get to that place. I want to get to that level of intimacy and authenticity and closeness in a conversation that it really is just a conversation between two guys. Yeah, that's right. But what I've got now, I've, I can get them, I got people who will call me or email me so I can get them coming to me. But what advice do you have for bridging that gap, that first contact where you want to, well, in my case, I do it all with questions. I don't do a lot of selling. I ask questions and their answers to the questions sell themselves. Right. Yes, I'm doing this because I need to pay for my kid's college degree or whatever. You know, they answer the questions and they tell me what I need to know and then they sell themselves. <clears throat> but I want to get to a point where I have permission to answer the question that it's not like this massive intrusion right at the beginning. So when a guy email, I've got like three, four people email me yesterday about, possibly taking a concrete site I've got. Now, it's I feel clumsy trying to do it with email. I don't want to try to sell too early because they don't even know what I'm talking about. I just want to get in a conversation. So I think what I want is I really want a phone conversation with them, right? I don't want to try this with email. What do you yeah, do? I think that the phone I, conversation is is key, right? Yeah. And and just being like you saw how the conversation developed with me and Jeff where it started out pretty casual, right? Like don't set the tone to be super formal or it's like, Hey, this is, this is Harry calling from like Harry's leads incorporated. Like, it's like, Hey, this is Harry. How, how's it going, man? Like where you're, you're like whatever city there you're, you're in um, 
So you're you're in um, Northern Virginia, right? Like if if we were doing like another role play, Harry, yep. you're in Northern Virginia, right? Yep. So what part of town are you in? Uh, we're out in the western suburbs, out near um, West Virginia. Yeah, there's a lot of really beautiful areas over there, huh? Yeah, absolutely, it's gorgeous. So I think two of the most wealthy counties, Fairfax and um, Loudoun, the Loudoun West County, are right there, right? So in concrete, this is a great area because you have a lot of people probably with some big driveways and stuff, huh? Oh yeah, yep. So you can kind of see yeah. how I've just like yeah, that's right. Quickly like taking it, taking yeah. it there. And like, what, how long have you been doing this? Like, we can keep this going. How long have you been doing this, Harry? 47 years. 47 years. What do you do when you're not doing concrete? That's a long time. I've never done anything else other than concrete. I wouldn't love, know. You love this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So just how do you, this is how I disarm people. Everybody's yeah. got to have their own style. Yeah. But just like, I'm asking questions, but I'm not asking necessarily like, the standard question and my tone is very like casual and there's like a warmth to it right that is like yeah and that is what you just did is exactly what i would do i gave the bar example that's exactly what i would do in a social situation yeah so just do that if you can do that i think most people struggle to be able to do that at all if you can do it in the bar situation you can transfer that that's the same way it went for me when i first started approaching clients i was like scared and nervous and then I just decided I, I'm just going to be myself. And, and some of it just took reps, right? It just took reps. And I like had botched business calls. And then it got to a point where it almost never was a botched call, right? And it, they, they, they seem like they're always interested in it, but it, it would always start with that. Just like with, with Jeff, like when I was doing it with Jeff, like I found a way to make, like get a joke in there and make it not so formal. And like Dave said, it was like much more of a conversation. And a lot of what you said is like, I like, I like asking the questions and getting them to sell themselves on like, why do you need our service? Like, what, what would this do for you? Exactly. Typically, I'll dig in a little bit deeper. And um, like, we had a guy, uh, I, I went to sell a guy on in Vegas when I was living there. It was really weird the way this happened. He, um, he called one of our sites for a service and our receptionist that was taking the calls was not there that day. So I took the call and I started talking to him and I found out that he ran this other business and I went in and met with his business. And why we were, I was there for like two hours. The guy started crying yep. during the, the, he had gone through cancer and this like really tough, like he'd been through some really tough stuff and he ended up writing a check for $3,000 and it wasn't a trick or anything. I genuinely cared and I dug in and I like got to know them. So I think just like being like interested in them and not being just, just like I've said this, but maybe now we'll really start to set in is like, we're two humans. You've got your concrete company. I've got my marketing company. I can help you with your concrete. And you don't know that because I'm some stranger, but if we're just like two guys in a bar, like, what would I do? How do I connect human to human and stop worrying about all this other like nonsense and just like get down to like human to who they are and what they want. And like, like, you know, some of the struggles like that we've been through and, and just like, you know, being a, I don't know, like, obviously for some of us, it comes easy. I'll tell you, like sales came very easy for me. And I know that a lot of you, it doesn't, but it came easy for me because that's my natural mode of just like connecting with people and understanding them and like caring. If you can show that to them, you'll build trust. If you can do this while you speak with confidence and you're knowledgeable and you believe in this sales is like so much. It doesn't need to be this monster under the bed. That's like, for me, those are the two, the two things. And, and not being afraid to hear a no. You know, I think that's the, that's the other side of the coin on that. It's like it makes a big difference when you're at the bar and you're hitting on that whoever and you're not afraid to hear the no. Right. So that, that's where you really you really dial it in and make the make the sale. Harry, did that give you? It does. It does. You actually gave me exactly what I needed. OK, cool. Awesome. All right. So we are over an hour and a half in and we need to get to my buddy Puneet for the spotlight session. Are you still awake? 
He's here. He's ready. I, I have it in the speaker view, so I can't see him. Uh, what's up, brother? How you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks. Do you want to buy my marketing service? <laughs> I think so. Huh. so. So talk to me, man. Where are you at? Okay. Um, I put together a few points. Uh, so let me share my screen. Sure. Uh, I think I need to enable give. it for you. Hold on. Okay. There you go. You should be able to do it now. All right. That should give some. Can you see my screen, guys? Yes, I can. Okay. All right. It disappeared. Okay, there we go. All right. Okay, okay. so you've um, been in last week of February. Yes. You've been busy, so, man. You've got 30 sites published. Yes. Okay. Just kind of so, reading through this. Yeah, let me just quickly go through background. So I come from IT, strong believer in digital marketing potential. Started my journey in February 2021, and then 30 sites published so far, got 20 through done for you and 10 created myself during the Jacob prep, Teams prep week. Now the roadmap I'm working towards is uh, having 100 sites published and then 10K per month by 2021. Uh, that's the low bar. I think I can do more. Uh, and that's, I think also I'm, I'm here to get feedback on that. But here the step back. Um, so for the next 70 build, sites i'm also thinking on the more focused niche i've done 100 due diligence sites and all but i want to get one or two focus niche so that i can keep building user content and kind of my and more knowledge there um and beyond 2021 is of course monetize all the sites and some sites to be sold to boost all the revenue now this session of course i want to get feedback very pinpointed on the problem statement i mentioned in the this uh, upper quadrant is none of the 30 published sites are producing leads um, so, and every now and then i get some calls uh, seen the the um, and the email but the essential i mean i'm looking for the result is this produce leads and rent those sites now solution, think of the solution and of course feedback from you, Patrick, and overall the regenerative team is some of the action plan I've thought through, uh, some of the questions I have in my mind, I've jotted down. And finally, of course, I uh, want the feedback essentially. Um, so if you see in the lower quadrant, uh, I know that I have to work on the content, the backlinks, uh, GMB and citations. Uh, for 30 sites, content and backlinks, the backlinks I've gotten it done, so the done, done for you, I guess it's only one backlink per site for 15 sites I've done so far, but I might have to buy more. And I have to hire BA, uh, sorry, VA to get those things more done. GMB is one thing I have not started it, and I think I talked to you, and that's what you said that right away, get it done. And uh, I have, I want to get that done and uh, I have a question and I think I was reading about it and I also asked my JK team was, uh, I have few uh, rental properties and uh, I think I can use them to get my sites uh, GMB uh, pinpointed there. Uh, so I just wanted to have a validation on that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's, that's a great idea. I've got rental properties and they all have GMBs there as well. Okay. And uh, once GMB is done, I was thinking to just go with the service done for use for citations. And uh, hopefully that would start ranking. Uh, but then after we start generating the leads, I have to still go and try to sell them. So that was my action plan in like very abstract format, but still it might need some more uh, pinpointed feedback or um, around that some other solutions. Yeah, so let's let's go through this a little bit, and um, I've got a lot of thoughts and ideas for you. So um, in the lower left quadrant there, where it says um, 100 sites published by this time, this one right here, right. I don't like that. I don't think that's the best use of your time right now. I think yeah. that um, you need to focus on these 30 sites. You know that um, you've got so much time, and it looks like this kind of like um, leads me to another small issue that I think you're going to run into. 
So based on what I'm seeing, I think that you're somebody who is short on time, but you have a lot of, you have like funds to be able to pay for things. Is that correct? That's correct. The problem with this is building out an agency where you don't know how to do some of the stuff is going to be a long-term problem for you, especially with this one right here, backlinks. You don't want to hire a VA to do some, to do backlinks. If you don't, you need to understand backlinks enough so that you can evaluate the work of the VA and you need to evaluate the links that you're getting that are done for you links. So I've had, I, I, I'll tell you, you make your own decision from this fact. I got done for you links exactly one time and I've never got it again since, okay? The links are gonna be very important to your success with this. There is a class that you could take, uh, Greg Bukovac's class I think is, is a good one. There's also like link insertion and um, guest posts that you can buy from a variety of sites around the internet. Um, you need to be looking at these through different tools and looking at the quality. How many links are on this page? Like I, I really wouldn't want to have a link if there's like, if there's more than like 10 links that are going to other sites on this page, that's not really, it's going down pretty quickly, right? Mm -hmm. So if it's, if it's like a blog comment, it's not like Google's trying to decide like how good is Puneet's site? Oh, he's got this blog comment here, let's rank him first. That's not how it's gonna work, right? You're gonna to have to like find some legit sites. It could be reaching out to other people that are in this niche, maybe in another city and offering them like $100, $200 and be like, hey, I'm just trying to get some more people. You're in the same niche. Can, can, would you mind sending a link? I'll give you 200 bucks if you just leave it on here for the next couple of years or something, right? right? So doing stuff like this. The problem with building out all these sites, and we've talked about this, and I know, I know that you're kind of new to this group and you're, you're considering lead generated. Um, so you haven't seen these previous calls, but I've got this kind of strategy. And if you look back now that you're in the group, you can see, I think it was like three weeks ago, I did a call and with that call, they're accompanied a spreadsheet. So that spreadsheet has different phases that you wanna take your sites through. So. Let's pretend that these, you have rental homes, right? right? So what would you rather do? Let's say you're building these rental homes, like we're building these sites, right? So um, do you want to build 100 rental homes before you rent the first one? No. No. So we, we wouldn't do that, right? Like, but like you, so you've only got like one hammer, right? You've got one hammer. So you're building these, these homes and you're going on to the next home and you're not going to really be able to rent this house until you get some furniture in it. And that's kind of like the idea of like, put the hammer down and go do these other things, right? Stop building more sites because what's, what you're going to realize, and you can realize it maybe when you get to like 20 sites, or you can realize it when you get to hundred sites, there's going to be parts of this process that you thought you knew Going through and paying like a VA and done for you, like it sounds great where I can just like offload all this. Most of the time, that's not going to be the way that it's going to happen where it's just like they're going to build this like site that's just going to crush it and start ranking and bringing you all these leads. I'm just like, I've never heard it really play out that way. You're going to have to do some of the legwork here. And then what I would advise you is that you're going to hire a VA to replace the stuff that you know how to do. You, there's two reasons to hire a VA, right? There's one to like have them do stuff that they know how to do that you don't. And two is to have them do stuff that you know how to do that you don't want to do, right? Or shouldn't be doing, right? right? So citations are one where you like, like that's not really something that we really need to learn how to do. It's just like, it's really simple. You go and you create a little address thing. But backlinks, it's not something you want to do long-term, but you have to understand it well enough so that you can evaluate someone else doing it. And based on when you started and, and that and what you've done with the done for you stuff, I'm not convinced that you have that skill set drilled down. And um, it's important that you do before you pay someone because they can come in there. Not only will you be paying them to not help your site, but that actually, they can actually damage your site, which can ruin like the stuff that you paid for, right? So, yeah, <clears throat> uh, uh, I think that's if you. So what I would recommend is instead of like 
this being a hundred, you've already got 30, you've got 30 sites. So I, I would, I wouldn't even worry about this hundred. Um, and I think with these 30 sites, if you get these 30 sites to rank, I think that this is not a problem at all. I think that you, you'll do that easy, assuming that you chose the right niches for the 30 sites. So one of the, one of the philosophies that I preach is like a high ticket cost for our niches, right? So, um, $750 or more for the ticket price, right? Average ticket price. So like you, if you think about this, like dog grooming, it's an easy niche to start. So it's going to be more competitive. Okay. And the leads from it are worth 40 or $60. So business owners not going to be able to pay you a lot of money because their profit margin is going to be low. So a harder business is going to be less competitive with a higher lead value. Right. So this is why it's important. I don't know where that falls in. Does that, did you make good choices based on that information for your 30 sites, Puneet? Yeah, so most of them are in high ticket uh, value and they're high in the wealthy area. So that uh, does check mark. Okay. And, and coming back to your VA um, recommendation, yeah, I do agree with that. And that's the reason I have not hired any VA so far because uh, and if you see my, one of the questions is, I do want to create that KPIs on the monitoring tool where I can say, hey, this is where uh, current uh, site looks like. And I want to see the progress uh, in whatever months, but I want to see that those KPIs to be built out. And that's the reason I want to learn myself first, create those right. KPIs and then go and hire them and then give them exactly what I'm looking for. Yeah, exactly. That's how I would do it. So, um, you know, it's, you've got like so much time you can spread and you can spread more of it over these 30 sites because like there's this, um, I almost consider it like a myth where we build these sites and it's aging helps, but it's not like what typically doesn't happen is we build the site and then we don't touch it. And then eventually it just ranks on its own. What we do is like we build the site and we're working on it and we're working on it until it ranks. And then we kind of like take our foot off the gas pedal if, once it really starts to like crush the market. And then and like at that point, we really don't have to do much. But the idea of just like building a site and it's just like sitting there like all the other sites that aren't being worked on. And for some reason, Google's just going to magically pick yours like that. It's not really how it's going to work. Like that time period that's passing, like earlier on the call, I was talking about we've been in this competitive niche for eight months and things have like doubled over the last few months. Like we've been working on it this, this last eight months. It, just, it didn't just like magically occur, right? It's not, we're watering it and it's growing, right? So you've got to continue to water it over this time period. And if that's the case, then having fewer sites that you're focused on with more water is is better right right so especially when you're getting started you need to be like into the minutia a little bit of this and like looking at this the kpis like what's what's my backlink profile look like what are these numbers what are the calls what's our traffic like understanding this right is this yeah. thing trending in the right direction and if not i need to make an adjustment so that it is and then once you do that, if you get, I'll tell you, this is why it's harder to go from zero to 10K than it is to go from 10 to 50, because this first 10K takes the learning into account. So you, right. that's where you are. You got to do this. The GMBs, you got to get those, man. Like, like those, you, you're not going to have money coming in. That's really good. In my opinion, like, I mean, it can happen, but for the most part, it, it more of the business is coming from the GMB than the other areas. Okay. So right. Right. And those things take time too. Like you, once you get that in place, you need to get the citations. Like you can't do a lot of the things that help the GMB rank until the GMB is there, right? You can't have re reviews yet, right? So you've got to get it. And then you can start all the stuff that you need to do to optimize the GMB, right? Does that make sense, Puneet? Yeah, that does make sense. Uh, I have a couple of questions uh, there. Uh, and go and just provide me answers. Yeah, how to build a keyword strategy. Um, let's talk about that. I'm going to take the screen share away from you just for a second. Or maybe, uh, yeah. 
Um, bring it back though, because I, I want to see your next question there. Um, oh, so it's also. Do you want to paste those into the to the to the chat? Yeah, let me do that. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go through and talk about how to build a keyword strategy and how how I would do it. Um, I am going to stop your sharing. Yeah. Or you did it already. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about how I build my keyword strategy. So one of the things that I use is a tool. I use multiple tools, but there's ways to do this without using the tools. Okay. So um, I like Ahrefs. I like Google. I, I showed this before the um, Google ads keyword planner, I think is really good, but you're not going to get accurate results. until you... Jeff, can you, uh, who is that? Hi. We got some feedback coming. Gemma, I think. Sorry, guys. I'm on mute. Okay. Thanks, Gemma. All right. So I'll just go through and show you kind of three ways that, that these are kind of like my three go-to ways. I'm just setting up a couple things and then I'm going to share this in, in just a second. Um, all right. Tools. Planner. Okay, so this is Google Keyword Planner, okay? And like I said, not all of you guys will have access to this to the same extent, but if you, if you do, then uh, this, is, this is a great way to do it. And I'm gonna show you a free one afterwards. But um, so Puneet, like, do you wanna share your niche or some other niche? And I'll use that as an example. Or if somebody else has one, they yeah. can type it in the chat. I have roofing and flooring. Roofing and flooring. All right, we're going to do roofing because we were talking about that earlier. I, yep. I closed Jeff on a roofing earlier on this call. So I'm going to type in roofing here and then I'm going to type in roofer and like roofing company, um, roofing contractor. So I'm just giving this tool information. To what help about me. location? What's that? What about location? So we'll come back to that in one second. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just give you some, um, some rules to kind of follow first. So this is going in the United States, right? Um, so there's 165,000 searches for roofing. Some of this is going to be somebody doing a book report on roofing, right? Where it's just like there's, no, there's not buyer intent associated with all that. But roofing company, now we're starting to get to where there's buyer intent and roofing contractor, like, I guess someone could do a book report on, or like some kind of report on roofing contractor, but most of this is going to be like real, real, real searches, right? So I know that this is being applied all over the United States. And if this is the way that people are searching, then this is probably the way that they're searching. They're, this is the, the aggregate of the cities being added up, right? So they're being searched this way is probably correlated with how it is across the United States is how it's being searched in my city as well. Okay. So do we agree with that, Puneet? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So we don't necessarily need to know location for that. We can just like make some assumptions, right? Yeah. Like if I'm in New York city or if I'm in like Dayton, Ohio, like New York city is going to have a lot more because it's a lot more populated area, right? And Dayton, Ohio is a lot smaller. So, um, so like we can make those assumptions and kind of extrapolate, but like, I know that if I'm going into roofing and this is like everybody's house has a roof for the most part. Right. So, um, this is, this is like the way they're searching. And, you know, I know that this is a popular service, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start, I'm going to make like a note and I'm going to build, I, I'm, I'm going to build out a spreadsheet. I'm going to show you what that looks like. Give me one second because we actually have a client in this and we do this. What's great is if you niche down, which you, before we go on, I just want to make sure I want to point this out. So you had mentioned building 70 sites that are niche down. And I want you to take that with caution. Don't do that until you've closed some of these people in the niche that you plan on niching down in. And you've completed like a whole sale because you could find out that there's some big problem in this niche that you're not aware of, right? Mm -hmm. And like, I can tell Puni, you seem like a smart guy. 
And I like there's things that you you're you're not going to know about this until you like run run all the way around the bases, okay? And you made it back home. So before you do that and you commit, because that's a big commitment, make sure that you like this. It could be that you don't like the niche or all kinds of different things can show up, okay? Yep. Okay. Um, just give me one second. I'm searching through my Google account to try to find this roofing spreadsheet. Here it is. Okay. So this is what ends what we end up with. Okay. So you can see I've got tabs down here along the bottom. And this is looks like a lot of stuff, but this also ends up being the pages that I have. So this is the amount of monthly searches that are happening for these different terms, right? And it may not, I'm not going to build like a whole strategy around like home roof replacement, maybe, but I want to understand like the trends. Like this, this has home, like all these have home and house and residential. So I'm kind of building out themes in my head as I'm looking through this. Like residential looks like it has a lot of different high volume ones. Like that's 700, there's 2,400, 590 couple 480s so those are starting to like okay i need to have maybe like a residential page residential roofing commercial roofing right especially if that's what my client says he wants to go after right so there's metal so i need to i need to know if my client offers that i'm building my strategy around this these are contractor ones so now we have residential separated out so this is all the stuff and then what we do is we break it down and these kind of become our pages the themes that we're going to go after. So there's company. We may not build a company page, but I want to know this. If you end up running ads, the reason we do it this way, sometimes when we run ads, like these are the, this helps us with our ads. We're, we're, we're making what's called an ad group. And these are some of the terms that may be in that group. Okay. So, um, so there's metal. So th the way that I'm doing it is I'm coming through here and you can export. I can download these, all this stuff here. And then I can kind of start sorting. So that's if you have Google ads. Puneet, does that make sense how we, what, what I'm doing here and kind of what I'm looking yes. for? Okay. Yep. All right. So you can see there's a lot of stuff in here and I'm going to use Google Sheets to separate it out. This is just a starting spot for me. Okay. So another tool that I really like is Ahrefs. So I'm just going to show that real quick. Um, let me sign into my account real quick. So Google Planner, uh, you do sign up for that basically, right? It's a paid. You can't sign up for that. That's based on running ads. Oh, okay. okay. So, you, run so it, you can use it. They'll just tell you like, instead of it saying like 165,000, it might say between 10,000 and a million searches. It'll give you a range, which is okay. just like completely useless. So they're pushing you towards using this tool. Right. One of the cool things that you can do with this, because you mentioned location, I said I was yeah. going to circle back to this. So let's say that I want to look at Jeff's market there because he has that Austin roofing company. So now I can put here and I can see now it's going to give me the searching, the searches for this area. So now I've got like localized search, which is, is good. And I think that there's a tool called Mongols. I've never used it, but I've heard people say that you can do something similar on that. Um, Okay, so you can kind of see this. And then what I really like about this is I can go break down by a location here. And then, um, so these are these are counties. So this is the different counties. So you can see Travis County, which is the biggest county around here. It's 48%. And I think I can even break it down by city further. So these are surrounding cities. So now I can start to understand, this will help me with my GMB strategy to some extent. Like. I want to have a GMB in all of these different areas, right? Because, and, and, and I can break this down further if I wanted. Like I could not make it be this. I think I can come in here and say Travis County, Texas. So now I've just got this, this county here and now I've got it broken down for only the cities inside here. So I can see like these other cities are starting to show up here now too, right? So right. this is part of your due diligence. When you decide you're going into a niche, you want to understand this stuff a little bit. Come up with your strategy. Spend that extra like couple hours strategy to build this out. And then you've got kind of an attack plan of how you're going to go through this. You're not just like 
like winging it, right? Let's come up with, I know where I want to have GM beats. And it may not be, like imagine this bee cave area here is like an impoverished area. I know this Westlake Hills is really wealthy. This is probably one of the wealthiest areas in Austin. So even though it's only 2.7%, like these could be bigger jobs. And these could be people that are going to be, it's going to be easier for them to close, right? They're going to have, they're, they're going to have more money. So you need to blend all this stuff and take into account. And this is what, this is how we do our strategy when we're building it. It's not, we're not just winging it. We're like, okay, we really want to get a GMB in this part of town and we'll keep after it until we get that, right? And like, we've got a plan. We've got a checklist. After we've got it, we've got our checklist. Like, okay, this is where we want to get our GMBs. And we just stay after it until all those boxes are checked. We may pick up some we didn't plan on, but we're going to get the, we're going to get it where we want it. Right. So any questions on that, Puneet? I think this will also help to push the content to the specific uh, city or county as well, right? If you're targeting the GMB for, let's say, all five cities here, uh, do you recommend getting like five uh, pages for each city as well, or mention it just with the keyword those cities there? Um, you don't want, like, I'm going to tag you, or Jeff, can you tag Puneet in that content video? Um, I was trying to find it, but the, I, I made a video that goes through our content strategy. It's like 25 minutes long or something. And it breaks down exactly how we do our content. Let me get it off that thing that's like echoing. Um, so that's a very good starting point. Watch that and then like ask within that post, ask whatever questions you have, okay. but it will go through um, and explain, explain that. I'm not doing like five pages per city. I will build out like a, um, like a service, a service areas page, and then I'll list off the cities. And then on that page that will link to the actual city. And then I'll put my GMB to that city. So like we're talking about it on a couple different pages, but um, and we'll do neighborhood pages too. So for instance, a neighborhood page could be um, like on that location page, I might mention some of the neighborhoods and then I will build out a page that talks about like a part of town because I want more relevance associated with that specific part of town. Right. Right. So this is a trust and I would do the same thing. I could go roofing and it's going to give me like some related keywords, right? Um, brought it up in the, um, here's keyword ideas. I can't remember how to get to the right view. Um, let me go back real quick. Maybe if I do it this way, roofing, roofing company. Let's try this. There we go. So this will give you the, these views and like these parent topics. And um, this is pretty cool. This is a paid tool. This one's I think like 180 bucks a month or something for the base, but you can get a lot of information from there. So I would say it's like, there may be cheaper tools out there than Ahrefs that like, I think uh, Mangles or whatever it is. I think that one's quite a bit cheaper. And you can get a lot of keyword data from that. The free way to do it, which is how I started and I had success doing it this way. Oh, here's a, I actually have a, 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 a third tool that is probably the best. My buddy, Paul, that, you know, um, a month ago or whatever, he didn't know anything about it. This is what I had him do. There's a tool called Keywords Everywhere. Keywords Everywhere, okay? So this tool right here, you pay, um, this is a, API extension that you install. And then it's like $10 for 100,000 credits. So I think a credit is like for every keyword that they return counts as a credit. So this will last a while. And basically when you do a search, so let's say I do a search for like roofing, con roofing company, right? Then what it will do is it will, in this white space over here on the right side, it will list off all the different keywords, okay? So it's an extension for Chrome that you install. And then when you do a search, it gives you related keywords to what you're searching for, okay? So that's probably the cheapest way to go for a tool. Like it's one step above free from, from price because it's $10 and it'll probably last you months. And it will give you pretty much all the same data, 
So like if you're getting started, that would be a really good way to do it. So keywords everywhere. Um, okay, so the next way to get keyword, the free way to do it, I've got roofing company typed in here. So if I type in roofing, right, you can see it's going to give me all kinds of recommendations. The reason it's giving me these recommendations are these are most, it's trying to predict what you're searching based on like the things that people search the most, right? If you come to the bottom, there's this other area related searches. So I would be making a checklist of these things. You don't know the specific volume for these. That's the shortcoming with this, but you can be pretty sure that these are gonna like have good search volume if Google's recommending it, right? Okay. Along with that, when we go into the, when you look through the content, like some of the ways I'm looking is I'm looking at these questions that people are asking here. And I want to make sure that I answer those and you can press this show, show more. Right. So like on my site, I want to answer these because this is what Google thinks people are asking the most. So, and I want to show up for searches, then I should answer these, right. So that I'm more relevant and I, and I have more value in Google's eyes. Does that make sense, Puneet? Yeah. Makes sense. Okay. So essentially for the keyword um, specific to, because this is a location specific service, um, essentially that service at city state is essentially more likely the keyword we I'm, I'm competing with, right? And of course I will do that Ahref and other tools to see the, what is the volume coming in and try to get the, I think low competition, high volume traffic over there to get, um, but around it's, it's the service and that city and state, right? Is that not the um, keyword actually people are looking for in most so, of the cases? So people are going to search for this a lot of different ways. There, there, there's going to be hundreds of ways, maybe thousands of ways people are going to search for a roofer. I think that um, the one without the city and state, like roofing contractor is going to, more people are going to search that in your local area. Like I'm in Austin, right? So more people are going to search for roofing contractor than they are going to search for roofing contractor, Austin, Texas. Okay. But Google can determine, like if I type this in, watch, I'll do this right now, right? If I type in roofing contractor, Austin, I'm not going to type in Austin. I'm just going to type in roofing contractor. It knows where I am. Right. Look what it's showing me. It's showing me Georgetown. because I'm actually in Georgetown, not Austin, but in Round Rock is right next to me. And then this other Georgetown. So it's, it's bringing in this in. So people know that when they do a search. So most people don't put in like the city and state after. Right. You want to rank for both because you want to rank for like more and less. Right. But right. like, don't don't limit it to like when you guys are doing your research when i when i'm plugging stuff into the heat map to find out how my gmb is ranking some of the times i'm putting in the city but i'm always including like the general term because i just i know most people are just going to type it in and they understand that google is going to bring them something near them that's why near me is always a really popular search like if we go back here maybe it's not on this one um but near me like the, people understand intuitively that Google knows where they are and they're going to find things that are near them. Right. 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 Okay. So I know that you had some, some other questions on there. Um, yeah. It's, it's been like two hours and 15 minutes so far. Um, so I'm going to call this call quits, but I want you to take these questions and post them into the group and myself and other people. I would love to have their assistance answering these questions and, and I will chime in myself too on these. But I do, um, I've got a lot going on today and tomorrow. And um, unfortunately, I'm going to have to call this one because I feel like this could last another hour if, um, if I were to go through these questions because I try to answer them very thoroughly. Definitely. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, I've already posted in the chat. Uh, essentially, you have answered more or less, uh, touched uh, most of the questions. Okay. Uh, only specific thing I would say I guess uh, KPIs and the tools, uh, and I believe I have some sense in that. You've already showed me, uh, but I just want to make sure that I understand at the high level. Uh, this is all again to make myself understand, uh, do the things, and then hire, go and hire a VA to do the same stuff. Right. Uh, and I think 
ahref and other tools give a good um, understanding on the kpis but just look at the question and then if any thing you can tell me that would be nice yeah Including i think your own tool <laughs> the the most important kpi is is really going to be like how much they're paying us and then that's going to be determined by how much we we're sending how much we're sending is going to be determined by another a number of other KPIs that we can set up, right? So those of you guys that don't know that term KPI, it stands for key performance indicator. Okay, so um, one of the ones that I think is most important is how my GMB is ranking. And this is why so many people love the heat map. So we added a, a feature into the heat map. And um, I, I don't, know off the top of my head how much it's being used, but I know in our agency, we use it like crazy and that's the averaging and it's the averaging of a group. So when you run a heat map, Puneet, uh, let me just grab one of these, um, hold on one second. I wanna find one that has diversity. Okay, so this, come on. Okay, here we go. This guy right here, this one is ranking 11.44 and that is an error. Hold on. That's not, we've had an issue with our locations. I know that there's some, some people that have been struggling with the heat map. We are working to fix it when graphs look like that and it just doesn't make logical sense. Um, hold on one second. All right, we're going to do it this way. I'm going to choose this Austin roofing company here. Okay. So I am going to flip the map to a competitor here and we'll look at Ace Roofing Company. Okay, so these this, this is the averaging area and this is a really important area because it's what it's doing is it's totaling up all the numbers from here and then it's dividing by the total number of points. So it stands to reason the better our average here for this GMB, that's the better ranking that we have. The better ranking that we have, the more leads we're gonna get as the GMB appears to be the most important part of a local search. So this is how it's ranking for this term roofing company. The feature that we added in, which I don't know how many people are using this, but like I said, we use it all the time is this group by. I'm gonna group by GMB, okay? So now it's gonna show me what the ranking is for, for a multitude of terms. So. I'm gonna go down to this Austin Roofing Company. You can see that their average is 20. But what this means is it's basically taking, you see all these different searches, roof, roofers near me, roofing company, roofer near me, roofing. And these are two different terms, right? Nice. That slight difference matters, okay? Roofing, for some reason we searched bare removal. I guess we had the wrong GNB. We did that multiple times. Um, Roofing company. So, so basically what I want to do is I want to plug in a bunch of different GMBs or a bunch of search terms in here. And I want to know what my average is for all of those terms. And that's what that number is. Okay. That is a major KPI for me and my business, because I, I, I like this, I know is going to like, if this number were like 1.5, I know that it's killing it. Because if I'm ranking that well for all those terms and it averages out in that area to 1.5, then like my GMB is probably destroying it and I'm going to be getting a lot of calls. So what you do is you can like, you can make a keyword list, right? You can see I've got a keyword list for roofing. So I plug in my GMB and when I'm creating this heat map, I choose my keyword list and it's going to run a heat map for each one of those. And then when that's done, now I know how I'm ranking for all these. And then I can monitor that, monitor that over time. Like I can know exactly, okay, I'm not really ranking very well for a roofing company. So now my strategy, I'm going to go and I'm going to get a review that says like, um, I hired this roofing company to come out to my house and I'm going to choose the location where I'm not ranking well. Or, or, or like, I'm going to choose the location that is the one I'm trying to move. So that doesn't mean that I'm going to choose one that's ranking 20th. If there's one that's fourth, I'm going to go after that one first because I want to get it in the top three. So that way it's in the map pack, right? So right. I'm going to start applying those hyper-local strategies to the terms that I want to improve, right? And if I can move those numbers, if I can get a collection of like the 10 best keywords and I have an average under like four, then I'm probably going to have a, a client pay me a lot of money. That's, that's just like, so I think that's a very important KPI, right? Makes sense. Um, 
some of the other ones is like um, you, you want to pay attention, like you guys should all be setting up Google Analytics and connecting that so you can see the traffic and see your click through rate and bounce rate. We are working towards building an integration that brings that information in here and allows you to see it on a company level, because I think it's really important. I think it's really undervalued. So, um, but th that's some other important K KPIs. Okay. So yep. does, that, does that make sense, Puni? Is that clear? Yes. Yes. Okay. Definitely. All right. Cool guys. Um, I'm sorry. I didn't get to some of your guys' questions. I see Santos. Um, you've got a couple more in there. Just post them in the group and tag me and I will go through and, and answer those for you. Maybe I can put together a little video, but it's almost nine o'clock here and um, I need to assist my wife with some things. So um, I hope you guys yeah. enjoyed the call and um, you guys have a great week. Let's do the activities that are needed so that we can celebrate more wins next week. You got seven days to create a win. I want to inspire you guys this week. Who can create a win? Right. So um, do whatever you need to do. Keep it ethical. Right. Um, to create that win in the next seven days. And uh, I'd love to hear about it. All right, guys, have a great okay. week. Puneet, thank, thank you, you for jumping on here. Patrick. I hope you got something from this. Thank you so much for your time. And you're, you're welcome. Detail. Good call. Thanks. Yeah. All right, guys, we'll see you in the group. Have a great week. Have a yeah. good one. Thanks, Patrick. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you.